be better. Got a warning on YouTube, Mike. <clears throat> so I'm going to wait a couple of seconds so Mike can say, well, hey, you're live, which he's not saying yet. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Is it all silent? No, you're live. Hey! Yes, I've got a warning. All of the tests went absolutely swimmingly, didn't they? They uh, did. Yeah. And the second you want to go live, YouTube pull the rug from under you. But we are here. Hello. So I think I've said hello to everybody in the chat. I know it's alarming, isn't it? I'm never ready to chat, but I am this time. So hello to each and every one of you in the chat. Uh, I have missed people. So hello, Chris. Um, who else did I miss? I'm, I'm sure I missed some. Oh, no, I can't scroll back up the chat just for giggles. Andrew, I missed Andrew. So hello, Andrew. Right, so you can hear me. I'm assuming that you can see the slide. Fingers crossed on that one. Fingers crossed on everything, I think, at the moment. Uh, and we'll see how we go with that. Hello, Alex. Ah, so we're back. Mm. We, we have news on that. So let's get going, I think. Right, so I've done that. I've done that. Uh, it looks like everything's working. I, I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious. Now it's saying the connection's excellent, so they, they were just playing with my mind. Good to know. Right, I am going to switch you. I am going to switch you so you can see the slides. So, fingers crossed you can see the slides. Move up there, and I'm ready to go, as long as PowerPoint's playing along. So, fingers crossed on that one. Right, has everybody got all their fingers crossed on this one? Because we might need it tonight. We might. I, I could be rusty. I could be terribly, terribly rusty. Right. Can you see the see the slide with the that's it? Yes. That's the one. Excellent. So hello and welcome. It's been a while. But we are at two one one season four. Do you know it should only be three? It was the computer glitch, wasn't it? That, yes. that that made it series four, but never mind. Right. What have we got tonight? We have the week at Matt Bites headquarters. It's been an interesting old week. We have news about season four. You don't want to miss that. Well, I don't want you to miss that. You might want to miss it, but I don't want you to miss it. Then we have Screen Float 2, one of my favourite apps, been around for years and years, got an update. Oh, I was dying to tell you about it last year. I was on the beta, but I couldn't, I couldn't divulge anything. But it's amazing. Then we've got Getting Productive in Obsidian, and then we're going to play a game in Affinity Publisher. We're going to trump data merge. And I really do mean that. And then I think we should have a drum roll for this, Mike. Where you go. We have an unboxing. In fact, we have two. And what's better with the unboxing than you having to guess what it's for? I do like to unbox something that's a bit of a challenge to you. And I think one of tonight's will be a bit of a challenge to you. So get yourself ready for that. OK, and hello, Dale. Dale is with us. Hello. Right, um, let's get going then. So we're broadcasting in 1080p. Make sure you're receiving in 1080p. YouTube has been having, well, the YouTube, it's become a swear word here. So make sure you're watching in high definition anyway. Make sure you've got the, the, the flag on it, the red flag, which is very close to the like button, which will be making another appearance very shortly. But let's go back to last Saturday when we were pondering whether whether we should or whether we shouldn't have an after hours tonight. Obviously, we did. We must have been riding in on, on the coattails of a victory here because uh, there, there was a match. It was alarmingly early. I don't do 12.30 on a Saturday, do I? Good grief. Yeah, I'm usually up late on a Friday. That's why. It was alarmingly early for a football match. But it was a home match against Everton. Were you confident before it started? I was. Oh, he was confident. Well, it did help that Everton have had, was it 10 points now, 6 points knocked off? Yeah, something like for, for financial naughtiness. Anyway, two penalties later... I bet that the ref got carried away from the ground with mm. flowers being thrown at him. <laughs> After two penalties later, although I didn't enjoy the second one myself, they won 2-0. So that put Mike in a very good frame of mind, which was just as well, because my excitement of the day was yet to arrive. 3.30 I was waiting for. Turned out it didn't come. It wasn't on the TV till about half past eight. But I did sit glued because I didn't want to miss it. It was corrupt. This is the biggest dog show in the UK. We do sit glued to it, don't we? We do. 
Uh, we watched it every year before we got mayor. But when we got mayor, it got even more important as his granddad was a winner at Crofts. So we were waiting for the pastoral group and the Samoids. This one was the best in the group. And um, just look at that face. Oh, it's a twin of Lola, isn't it? Mm. You can tell because it's a girl. It's got a definite girly face, that has. We enjoyed it. However, the Samoid was robbed yet again. Now, this was because it won best um, in breed and then it went to best in group and it didn't win best in group. But at least it was beaten by the one that eventually was the best in show. Of course, you should be thinking about what was Lola up to? Was she enjoying herself? Well, she certainly was. She was fascinated by the whole thing, as you can see. And as we always said when Mayor arrived, the best dog is the one you're watching it with, even if she did sleep all the way through it. Look at her little face. You didn't look much more awake, to be honest. No. <laughs> but, but you did at least see it. Which took us to Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Oh, it was tech day. Yeah, you'd think I'd be thrilled about that, wouldn't you? But it was unfortunately something I'd been putting off for such a long time, like three months. <laughs> Seriously. I think we need a MacBytes to explain the full horror of what happened. But this is the short version. Mm. A complete reinstallation of Mohawk. Mohawk being my 2020 iMac. I'd love to say it was easy, but I'd be lying if I did. Let's just say we had to scour MacBytes headquarters for a cabled keyboard and a cabled mouse before we could get beyond the hola message and multiple Siri voices screaming about assisted setup options. And without a keyboard, we couldn't even turn the volume down. We got there in the end. Didn't happen the first time, though, did it, Mike? It carped out in the middle, do you oh, remember? It did. Yeah. yeah. It, we got to the connect to your Wi Fi network, which, you know, there's there's like three thousand devices called connected to that already. So I knew that was working. And it wouldn't have a bar of it. And you know the thing that says don't turn it off in the middle of doing something? Well, there was nothing else to do, so I'd turn it off. The next time I got to the network settings, it happened in like a, a fraction of a second. Then we got there in the end. But that was Sunday gone. Which took us to Monday. And Monday, important day, actually. As the new week dawned, there was only one thing the entire world was talking about. And I can neither confirm nor deny that I have a new client interested in upping their game in the photo editing stakes. <clears throat> oh, which took us to Tuesday. Uh, I, I was coattailing on you, wasn't I? Mike was very, very happy on Tuesday. If you are unaware, in our hiatus, Mike has been awarded an MVP. This is a Microsoft MVP in Excel. So congratulations, Mike. Thank you. And he was a very busy boy on Tuesday because it was his first MVP summit. So um, yeah, attending virtually, obviously, because wasn't it in Seattle? It was in Seattle. Oh, yeah. you could have you could have invited Kim for lunch mm. if you if you'd have bothered going. There weren't actually that many people there, were there? I think most people were attending virtually. But yes, it was in Seattle, so he attended virtually. Tuesday was also um, an important day for us. We raised a glass to Mayor, who would have turned twenty three on Tuesday. Obviously, we were mere children when he arrived. <clears throat> I can't believe that. Can you imagine him at twenty three? He was a puppy till the day he left us, which was 10 years ago in the summer. So there he is. Uh, that, that photograph completely un, un retouched. That has not been photoshopped. If it had been photoshopped, um, I, I'd have put a head on Mike. <clears throat> you were leaning down, weren't you? It's not that I've taken your head off. That'd be a good one for the palace, just saying. And, and I would have got rid of the lamppost. So no, genuine image, genuine image. And when I put it on the slide... PowerPoint does this um, accessibility thing and tells you what the image is. And it said a white furry dog with its mouth open. And I thought, yeah, that, that sums Mayor up in every photo, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. So I was impressed with that as well, which took us on to Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday was a very, very important day. We were pushing the button. Ah, which one, you ask? Well, you should know because you're here. 
Wednesday, we let the cat out of the bag about tonight. You know Mac bites when you least expect it. Yeah, the cat was surprised as well. Almost as surprised as the rest of you. It apparently was a complete surprise all round. Uh, Johnny was first in. I don't know how you managed that, Jonathan. I think it was within 20 seconds. And we have no idea what you were doing, but we're hoping that being here with us certainly outdoes it. And you can always do that tomorrow or some other she, time. She must have hurt you. Who? Lola saying cat. Because <laughs> she's moved. She's moved now. Bless her. Then there was Jammy. Sorry about that, Jammy. <laughs> now, you did say you'd have a coronary if we didn't put a Mac Bites out, but there hasn't been one in such a while that, that you flipped your position. And I'm glad you, you, you weren't at the gym till like silly o'clock tonight. Uh, Patience was also excited, excited for a live session, as was Tracy. But I do believe Tracy is not with us yet. Tracy will be catching up on Catch Up shortly. Kim was just as happy. I, I need video of the happy dance. And I trust that Kiva was happy dancing too. Renee assured us he'd be with us, and indeed he is. Uh, as was Carol. Carol happy as well. Uh, then I got emails from people. Uh, so these weren't on social. These these were emails. A good news week. So I'm, I'm glad you're happy. And Deborah missed us. So she's glad we're back. And Mrs. Yarnold is, is a lady of few words. But we got what you meant. <laughs> so thank you for all those. Which took me to Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Thursday was the calm before the storm of being ready for tonight's show. There's a lot of moving parts, as you can imagine, and I could be somewhat rusty. So cut me some slack. So Friday rocked round and um, I have been channeling my youth. When I was at university, I lived on pot noodles. This isn't a joke, is it, Mike? No. This <laughs> This is true. Do you need to explain what they are for our non-UK people? It, it's it's a plastic pot with freeze-dried noodles in it that all you need to do is pour boiling water on. And what happened was I headed off to London and I was staying at what is now an American college. Um, there was no food on site. And despite the fact it was London and you think there was food on every corner, if you didn't want a McDonald's, you weren't eating. Now, I could have driven to a Tesco. I could. But then I would have lost my parking space. So I was talking to my mother on the phone and said, you know, the, the, the food's a bit a bit off. She said, what are you eating? I said, McDonald's. She said, and what are you having for breakfast? I said, another McDonald's. <laughs> it's cheeseburgers. Not only was it a McDonald's, I had to warm them in the microwave. Oh, can you imagine? So the next morning I got a note from the bursar to say there's, there's a parcel for you. I goes downstairs and there was, I think it was 18 pot noodles. Or 24 pot noodles. However you buy them in bulk from Tesco, that's what she did. But I'd long since given them up because I was forced to go gluten free. But Tesco's have surpassed themselves. And in their latest delivery, we had a free farm from pot noodle called imaginatively noodle pot. Mm, for copyright reasons, I presume. Uh, it's gluten-free, wheat-free and milk-free. I'm not completely sure what that leaves, but it tasted mighty fine and took me back to my youth. Uh, do do you have such, such? I would say, food, but nearly? Jammy does. Oh, Jammy Original has. curry pot noodle, he says in no, the No, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't have a curry one. No, <laughs> I used to have the beef one. This one is chicken and mushroom. Um, it, 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 there's a kind of taste of chicken. I wouldn't say there's any chicken in it, but yeah, there's a kind of taste of chicken. But let me know. Do you have these in the States or not? Let me know. Oh, you have yeah. ramen noodles ramen in the noodles. States. Oh, <coughs> I should actually have taken a picture of it once I got the lid off it, shouldn't I? But it didn't look in the slightest bit appetising. It looked much better once it had got water on it. Now, just for your added enjoyment, we scheduled this week's Tesco delivery for between nine o'clock and eleven o'clock, which is, oh, right now. We thought it'd be like Brooklyn's 196 all over again. And I thought we could let you know when they arrive and what happened, Mike. And who the driver was. And who the driver was, yeah, yeah. What happened? They arrived about 20 minutes ago. Hmm. And it wasn't Wendy. No. So, Tesco's have been, they delivered everything, no excitement. It was Jack, wasn't it? Jack. Have we had Jack before? I don't think so. No, I don't think no. we had either. Because he no. was saying please and thank you and I've put that there. You know, please and thank you, it must be new. <laughs> All of which takes us on to tonight and season four. So we're here. We're back. Now, before we do anything, 
don't think about bailing early, as we have a very special announcement coming before we go and you won't want to miss it. But right now, let's talk about season four. Is it going to be a strictly limited season? Well, to be honest, anything could happen. It could well be. It depends on you. So follow along with me here. 2023 was not a good year for creators on YouTube. You may be aware of numerous big names leaving the platform since January. Literally every week there's been two or three really big creators who've said, you know, I'm leaving YouTube. And you watch the video and they, they really mean it. They're leaving YouTube. They might put an odd video up, but they're leaving YouTube. Um, I feel their pain. So at the moment, as far as we're concerned, YouTube is in the last chance saloon, literally. So full disclosure, I'm going to show you some graphs. Well, it's one graph that I've explained what's going on. So you know what we're facing. The beginning of last year. Uh, so that's that's a 12 month look at it. So it was March, the beginning of March last year. Everything was fine. Look at the top of that graph. Everything was fine. And then in April, there was a huge drop. Now, obviously, that, that doesn't tell you what you're looking at. It was a drop in everything. Views, watch time, subscribers and revenue. They are the four major metrics. Views, watch time, subscribers and revenue. YouTube were blaming invalid traffic. Now, this is ludicrous because all my traffic was coming from YouTube and Google. So I couldn't see and they're one and the same. I couldn't see that that was a thing. But as you can see, I ploughed on until September when I finally gave up fighting the invalid traffic thing. Now, I got that invalid traffic in April and by September, other people were getting it. So I thought, well, at least it's not just me. And I started watching videos from other people and they were saying what they'd tried. And, and basically the answer was that nothing was working. But my invalid traffic had been going on since April at that point. Other people's was disappearing after 30 days. So I gave up. I thought, that's it. I can't do anything. There's nothing that's being recommended that I can do. Nothing that I've, I've tried has worked. So there's nothing else to do but leave it alone. And that's what I did. That's why we went on hiatus, which is why this is ludicrous. I uploaded no videos whatsoever, nor did I do any live streams from September to January. And yet things improved. They never got back to the level they were at in March, but they improved considerably. Go figure. So don't do anything. Don't create any content and things improved. So in January, that meant that we, we were thinking of, right, OK, it's improving. Now let's start putting some content out. Mm, that went well. There was no mention of invalid traffic. And I'm assuming that's because there's precious little traffic at all now. So since I've uploaded some videos and scheduled some live streams, things have already tanked, even before the first of them. And this is why YouTube is in the Last Chance Saloon. However, the good news here is that there are several ways that you can help because there's nothing that we can do. Trust me on that. Unless we, we go on strike. That works well, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's easy that as well. But there are ways you can help. The first way you can do right now, YouTube like engagement. So the thing that you could do right now is like the video and then they know that you want to watch it, which means they might offer it to more people, which would be good. The other thing you can do is subscribe. And I know that everybody in the chat is subscribed because you have to be subscribed to chat. This is after we got accosted by those naughty people of an adult nature, wasn't oh, it? Yeah. Yes, they were sending things that we didn't want to see. So that's why you have to be subscribed to chat. Uh, the other thing you could do is leave a comment. Now, the thing is, leaving a comment lets YouTube know that you want us to be able to keep bringing you MacBytes after hours. But you can only leave a comment on the video after the live stream. And that's after it's finished. But come on, we do send you a link to the recording and we provide timings for all the content. So how long could it take to hit comment and say, can't wait for the next show? Now, trust me when I say it will mean it will make more shows more likely than not, because the way it's going, no comments, no shows. So you do have to do that after the event. Now, you might be thinking, well, just a minute, I'm in the chat and I'm chatting. Yes, YouTube like that as well. But those comments are 
only played back when people watch the video. There's no comments underneath the video because you've done all of your chat live. I think it's ludicrous that you can't do that until it's finished, but that's where it is. So more comments, more chance of more shows. There's two other things, which is super chat, which you can do during the live stream. And there's super thanks that you can do after when you're watching it. So that's where we're at at the moment. We have no idea what is going to happen going forward and we wish we had control over it, but we don't. So pretty much the future depends on what happens from this point forward. So if you put comments on it, if you put likes on it, if you tell your friends or even your enemies, don't don't care who you tell, but please tell somebody. Um, and hopefully things will improve. If they don't, it'll be a short season. But do let me know what you think. Put it in the chat here. Uh, you can mail us if you like. Any ideas, we're, we're more than happy to take them on. But at the moment, I think my stats were, well, if they get any worse, I'll be paying them uh, and they'll be taking views off me, which was where we were. This was where we were in September. And that was why we went on hiatus. It took us a couple of weeks to get ready to come back. And in that couple of weeks, obviously, YouTube read our minds and it tanked. So that's where we are. Right. OK. Oh, Neil says likes and subscribes. Leave lots of comments. Will you be answering those questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you for everybody who's supporting us here. It, it is utterly ridiculous. I wish there was something we could do. Um, they are supposed to have uh, ambassadors, YouTube ambassadors, who were worse than useless with the invalid traffic. They just sent you round in a circle, you know, report it. But when you reported it, they blamed you. And uh, there's just no words. So it's about as bad as it, it has been right now, which was as bad as it was in September but we're giving it another go. Doesn't work, we shall have to try another platform. And I have no idea how that would pan out. So let's see how it goes. Right, let's move on to some content then. So Be before you do, Kimmy wants to know if we ever got the Yule log. Oh, <laughs> oh I'd yes. forgotten that. We did. We did get a <laughs> Yule log. In fact, somebody not a million miles away from here made himself sick with Yule log, didn't you? <laughs> You finished the last one. No, I one. got that other thing. Oh, yes, there was honeycomb cake as well. Yeah, honeycomb We've cake. We've got pictures of this. I, remind me, Mike, to put it in for next week. We right. did get a Yule log. In fact, I think we ended up... Well, you tried ordering about four, didn't you? Or was it six? Six, I think. Bearing in mind, these Yule logs are about six pounds each, weren't yeah. they? They were obscenely expensive. Uh, but they wouldn't send more than one. So, obviously, good job we started ordering them early in October. And then, of course, in December, it was all Easter eggs. But yes, we did get a Yule log. OK, so Screen Float 2. Who's used Screen Float before? Let me know in the chat. I have once or twice. Well, it's been around since 2011. Um, it was one of these apps that when it came out, it's like, that's genius. Why did nobody thought of that? And its unique selling point at that stage was when you took a screenshot it floated it on your screen. And when I say floated, I mean floated on top of all of the other apps. So it's been with us for 13 years. And last year, well, in 2022, the developer announced he was redesigning the whole thing. And he was going to give us a behind the scenes look at the development. Last year, there was a six month beta program. Luckily, I, I was lucky enough to get on. Oh, it was fabulous. Now, what had happened by this stage was I was having problems with the app um, because it was so old and it had been like, we'll have to fix it, we'll have to fix it. So this version two is a complete rebuild and the features that have been added make it one of the most comprehensive screenshot apps that there are. Now, there are plenty of alternatives. Most people, if they take one screenshot every now and then, they'll use command and shift and four on a Mac and that will take you a screenshot. There are variations of that, but you do need to know a lot of shortcuts to use it. The screenshot app is actually free on the Mac when you install it. And that one is activated with command shift and five. And that's the one that gives you timed captures, menu captures and other features. And if you only take the odd screen cap, you can get away with it. Then there's apps like Snagit. Clean Shot. Now, Clean Shot's popular because it's part of Setup. Um, I think Shotter is actually free. So why would I be going for this one? 
Uh, now, it's not instead of all of the others. It's as well as. So the, fee the key feature for me is being able to float those screen captures. But now there's a lot more unique features with the app because it has been completely rewritten. Obviously, before we go any further, you'll want to know about the cost. You're wondering about the price. Well, if you had Screen Float 1, it's a free update to Screen Float 2, which I thought was incredibly generous because I bought it in 2011. So all that you would need to do in that circumstance is just update it in the App Store. If you haven't already got it and you would like it, you can get a 30 day free trial from the developer's website and purchase in the App Store for $14.99. Now, you'll notice it says offers in-app purchases. However, they are completely optional. If you look at them, they are just tips and this is not a subscription. It is a one off cost for version two. There is no ongoing price and you don't need to make an in-app purchase. Sometimes some features are behind an in-app purchase. In this case, they are not. I think the tips have been added. If people had version one, they get a free update to two and they want to, to support the development, which is exactly what I did. So let's go and have a look at that. Do we have any questions before we go? No, but a lot of, a lot of people are saying they're using Snagit. Shop and underneath eagle. Yes, I'm using the eagle one as well. So, so good point with that. Right, I'm going to need sniffing tool on Windows 11. I use that. Today. Oh, the sniffing tool. Good I use grief. That several times today. Right, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to bring this on, which is just something to take a screenshot of. You'll see it's not recording at the moment. That's not because I've forgotten to record. This is ScreenFlow. You can also see that it's the webcam. And it's live. Hello. Right. All I want is to screenshot something. So this is what I will do for a start. So I have a screen float up here showing in the menu bar, which I don't normally. I usually just use a shortcut key, but I'm showing you this because there's lots of features already in there um, that you could use if you wanted to. But I have this configured my own way and I just use shortcut keys. So the first option is to capture a new shot. And you can see that the default for that is Command Shift and 2, which makes sense because Command Shift and 4 is the built in option. Command Shift and 3 takes a screenshot of every screen you have attached to your Mac. That is a built in option as well. So Command Shift and 2 makes sense. If we started going the other way up to 5 is also so 3, 4 and 5 are attached to features of the system. That would take you to six, which is difficult with your left hand. So Command Shift and two makes total sense. However, beware, because Command Shift and two is also the start recording and stop recording shortcut key for both ScreenFlow and Camtasia, which would cause havoc. So you've got two options. You either change the shortcut key in ScreenFlow or you disable that option in Camtasia and ScreenFlow. And that is what I've done. I do not want any shortcut key that can stop it when I'm recording. I need to press a button to do that. So that's what I did. And I've left it at Command Shift and 2, just something to be aware of. So my Command Shift and 2 and what I then get is a crosshair. And if I use the space bar, it's going to restrict my capture to a window. And that is how it displays it. When you move away from that, you cannot tell the difference between the two. One's a screenshot and one is the actual interface. So I'm going to move the interface out of the way. And let's have a look what you get with this. So it's captured a window like that. It's put this frame around it, but the frame only appears by default if you hover over it. If you move away, the frame disappears. The frame does allow you to interact with that in various ways. But the idea is that if you had something else, so say like the finder window, it will hover over all of the other windows. That is the whole point of it. Now, you might be wondering, let's get all of these out of the way. You might be wondering why that is so important. Let me show you. So if I go into something like Publisher, and I have my panels open. 
So let's say my table and table formats and text frame. And I'm doing a data merge and I've got this open. And I want to make notes, which is what I do. Uh, if I'm doing a demonstration, which I'm doing a, an Affinity Publisher demonstration later, I will need to make notes as to what size something is, what the position is, you know, what the format is. And I might be looking at this table panel here and I want to enter it into my notes app. So let's say I open a notes app and I've got it on another screen and I click on that notes app. Mm, those panels have disappeared. And the only way you can bring them back is to activate Publisher. That gets old fast. I would literally be switching between them a million times as I'm trying to make notes on it. So what I would do is Command Shift and 2, press the space bar, hover over these. There's my table and my table formats. Let's do the text frame. And let's do the data merge, which obviously there's nothing in there, but there would be normally. And now I have three images of that. So when I click away into my notes app, they stick there and I can see all of the settings and I can make notes on that without having to switch backwards and forwards. So for me, that was the feature in 2011 that was like, wow, this is game changing for me. So if you're writing any kind of tutorials or notes to yourself about how you've set something up and those settings are in dialog boxes like these, that's why this is so powerful. So I could actually at that stage close Publisher and still have these things there. And sometimes I look and think, thought I closed Publisher. And then when I move over them, I realise that they're actually screenshots and nothing more than that. So that to me is the main number one superpower with these apps. All right. You can with these close them and they don't just disappear. There is a library that I will show you. But before I show you the library, I'll show you everything that you've got attached in here that you could do. So when you hover over this, you get the frame and the frame starting on the left allows you to close the shot. Now, closing the shot will close it to the library. Hiding it will just hide it. You can move it to the bin or you can just delete it. Now, deleting it skips the bin. So uh, the bin is like the safety net. You could just delete this when you've finished with it if you don't want it. Now, there is a library. So that's why we have this next option here. When you click on that, you can add your metadata. So it tells you it's a screenshot of Affinity Publisher and when it was taken. But if I wanted to know that that was the data merge window, I could type that in. I could also add tags. So if I want to be able to filter by all my Affinity Publisher snaps, I can put in Affinity Publisher as a tag. I can also describe what it is in here and everything that I do in here, I'll be able to search the library for down the line. I can also up here uh, give give images a rating. I must admit, I, I tend not to do that. But if I did, it would be a five rating. So I could do that. At this stage, you're editing the metadata. So you would need to save that to save it to the image and the library. OK, I can see um, a, a super chat. Thank you very much for that, Graham. So that's what you've got on the left. Moving across to the right, you have what looks like a document. And if you click and hold that and pull it, what happens is it makes a copy of that image on the desktop. But if you click the button rather than click and hold and drag, it does something completely different. So if you click it, you can drag or click here and you can create these images in different formats. So if for whatever the reason, normally I go for PNG, but if I was wanting high quality for print, I could grab the TIFF and put that there. And I have two images here. You can see that behind the other one. That's the TIFF and that's the PNG. And that is by clicking on there. Now, more than that of your five different formats, you also have advanced options under here. If there's any alpha, you can retain it. You can reduce the resolution if you want to. In essence, what you're doing is exporting it. So you could export it at a different size. You can choose in here whether you restrict the longest side, the shortest side, restrict the width or height, uh, and you can choose to do that with the reduced resolution. 
You can also choose to include annotations. Now, at this point, you may be unaware that it can do annotations, but it can, which we'll see. Uh, you can export both the original or the version that is annotated, so it's completely non-destructive. You can also choose to include the notes and tags as metadata if you want. And the notes and tags were what we added from the button on the left. So this button over here, while normally it's collapsed, it's actually quite useful to have that open on, on the off chance that you do want to include notes and tags. Then this last cog has got all sorts on it. This is everything it can do, basically. So the first thing you can do is copy it. So you can copy the file path or you can copy the actual data. You can choose to open a copy with a specific app if you want. So if I wanted to open this and do something with it in Affinity Photo, I could send it straight to Affinity Photo. So that's opening in the background. I will move that out of the way. And there is the image. So I can then start to work with it in there. So let's bring that back. Right. Next, I've got uh, that I can share it. Now, these are your share options from within your system settings, your system preferences. Um, I have very few of these. I would actually only have two left alone. I'd only have AirDrop and Zite. I couldn't, I, I don't use mail and I don't use messages. I, I've never opened messages on this computer. So um, I'm oblivious of what's going on in there and I don't really use shortcuts. So Zite really is the only one that I would use in here, but I could send it to Zite if I wanted. Um, Zite is... It allows you to send things up to the cloud as quick as you've seen. I don't need to drag and drop it or anything else. I just send it to the cloud. Hopefully, uh, if I paste that in there, it's a hideously long URL. It might not like it. In fact, I'll shorten it before we go any further. Right. And then that might work better. So let's put hello, Tracy. Tracy is in the house. Thank you very much, Tracy. There's right. been a couple more super chats. Oh, I've, I've missed them. I've missed them. May, make a note and I, I will say thank you right. shortly. Right. That is the link to what I've just uploaded, which is just that image on Zite. So there are times that I, I use that because I use Zite to put images in Obsidian, which is my notes app. But that is an option that you've got there. Would it work with Hookmark? I think it should. It certainly should. Uh, I've not tried it, but it should. Right, so that was the share option. Now, then there's detected data. This is so cool. Oh, this is so cool. Detected data detects the content of your image. So you'll see it says detected text. And when you hover, it says it's got the word data merge that you can copy or redact. Data merge lets you, so you can see as I'm hovering here, what it's actually talking about in the background from the row. So it does it row by row. But if I wanted to lose the add a data source and the fields thing, all I would need to do is redact it. And then I can go back and I can redact the next line, which is just so cool. Um, better as far as I'm concerned, because I don't have to select it and then make sure that the lines are equal and stuff like that. You can just redact like that. Now, that's not the only type of data that you can detect, but I have got more images that will make more sense. So we'll come back to um, the detection. Then you can export. So when you export, you can include the title. You can choose whether you have the notes, you can choose the format. And again, you've got the size and all the rest of it. Now, to be honest, I probably wouldn't go through that. Because when you look at the options in here, they are identical to what you have here. So you might as well just click there and drag it out. But if you if you want to export it, you can export it. It's exactly the same option. Right. So uh, then you can print. We do have a printer, don't we? Yeah, it's covered in dust over there. It does print every now and then. Um, but you could print it if you want to. Then you can edit the info. So going into that, it's the same info that you had over here. It works exactly the same way. You can just do it from there because what's on this menu is everything that you can do. You can choose to resize from here and you can crop from here. So if you do want to make changes to this, you could do. You can rotate it. 
Now, obviously, the biggest thing that you can do is annotate it. So if I choose to annotate in here, it opens it up in a different editor. And what this is going to enable me to do, it gives me a whole range of tools at the top that I can now use to annotate this. So first of all, let, let, let's do a draw around the data merge, which is very dicey because I'm drawing around it. What I can do from there, because that's not that, that thick really, is it? But if I double click it, if I go back and choose the arrow and double click it, I can choose a different colour and I can choose a different weight for that. That's probably about right. I can also choose whether I have it dotted or I have it dashed or I have it solid. And all of this, remember, is completely non-destructive. Uh, then you could draw around it. So let's draw around that. Now, if you want to use yellow the whole of the time and you don't want to keep having to go into here and changing it by going back over here, hang on, let's delete that and double click on that and then choose a different colour. What you can do is double click on any of these and choose the colour first. So I could choose a green one there and make the annotation green and put it around the generate down there. So you could do that. All of these things work exactly the same way. This is a line, this is an arrow. So let's get the arrow and point up there. We've got a star, so put a star on it. You've got a tick and a cross. And again, these can be edited at will. So down here for the cross, I would probably want that to be thicker. And I might want this to be green and thicker like that. So you can do all of that. You can add text if you need to. You can add a numbered list to it. This one's weird. I don't like it myself. Um, it's a call out. Uh, when you do it, you're drawing the bit you want to see, which you can move. So you can move this around, but it, no, it's not for me. It's not for me, that one. So I will undo that. Get rid of that. Uh, and then you've got redact. So if you want to redact manually, you can do. So this using it this way, you have to draw around it. Um, it's easier if it's text to just use the option where you select it, because that way it looks much more even than you would manage single handed. But once you have done that, you can click done and go back into here. And you know in here that you've got the export option, but you've also got the export option in here. So you can see down in the options here whether to include the annotations or not. So we'll drag a PNG down here. I'm going to choose to keep both. And you can see when I open that, we've got the annotations on it. But if I were to go back into here and say, don't include the annotations, and we'll have it as a JPEG this time, just for good measure, that we can open that and it doesn't have the annotation. So we have a clean original image to work from. So you could use these annotations to leave yourself notes on this. But when you come to use it, just drag them out as you would normally. But you've already told it you don't want the annotations. So very, very handy. I don't think I'd need to do that because I've got the meta here. So I could put notes to myself in there. I guess it's whether you want to see the notes typed over the images or not. Completely up to you with your workflow. You can also choose to recapture and delete the, that image, which I'm not going to do because the original thing is no longer there because I closed Affinity Publisher. Now, organize is referring to the library. So we need to pop into the library to see this. The library is called the Shots Browser, which is what this is talking about here. But you can favorite images. You can also add them to folders to organize them. You've seen that you can rate images. So there is a rating option and you can go straight to where this image is in the Shots Browser. And we will be getting there shortly. You've also got in here the settings which it's brought up unhelpfully on another screen. But there's the settings and I'll take you through all of the settings shortly. And what else did we have in here at the end? You can choose to ignore mouse clicks. Now you might be wondering why, why would we be doing that? Well, the thing with this is I if I click the mouse and drag, it moves it out of the way, which you're going to need to, to use if you think about how you're probably working with this. That when you hover over it, the, the frame appears, but it doesn't disappear. You've got a couple of options for that. If you hover over it and you have a wheel on your mouse, 
you can take the transparency down to nothing by wheeling up which is great, but then it disappears. So what I'm doing now is wheeling it down so it comes back to 100%, but that is one thing you could do. You can also completely configure what happens if you were to double click an image. And if you were to double click an image, I have mine set to disappear. So I think that was pretty much all we had on that menu, but this is the Shorts browser. So before we go into it, I'm using it to bring this back and make sure that that was it. Uh, no, it's not it. OK, so as well as the mouse clicks, you can choose to show it everywhere or only in the current space. So if you use spaces to organise yourself and you have a space for making notes, you may only want it in a current space. You can choose to hide it and you can choose to close it. And the close it is what I did when I double clicked it because that's how I have it configured. So let's close it from there. Don't need those anymore, so we'll delete those and go into the Shots browser. Now, the Shots browser you can get to from up here. Uh, where's the Shots browser? It's in there. Show the Shots browser. Or you can use the shortcut. So I have two shortcuts I use with this. I have Command, Shift and 2 to take a new image and Command, Shift and 1 to show the browser. But I don't have shortcuts for capturing a new timed shot. You use a timed shot where you need to set something up before you take the screenshot. So that could be something like showing a specific menu or getting something to a certain stage, maybe starting a download or something. The third option is you can actually make recordings and you can edit them as well inside ScreenFloat. I don't do that. That's, that's what I have Camtasia for. I don't tend to make quick and dirty videos, even if it's a quick and dirty video. I'll still use Camtasia because that's the one I'm used to editing in. But you could do that if you wanted to. So there are those two options. But there's lots that you can do in the Shots browser. So what we have in here, this is my genuine stuff, including the finance stuff. Um, but this is the one we've taken tonight, uh, as were these that we took. So we took all of these tonight. I have a couple of extra ones that show you the features, some of the features that we've already seen. So this is me opening this image that I took just before we started. And obviously you can see MacBytes and After Hours and what we're doing tonight. But if I go into the detected data, it will have detected all of that. The MacBytes at the top and I could copy that or I could redact it. And then I've got the after hours that I could copy or redact and the week at MacBytes headquarters and I can choose this. So we don't want you to know yet what the unboxing is. So I could redact the unboxing uh, and should have redact the freebies while, while we're at it. So detected data. Uh, freebies. Where's the freebies? Freebie, freebie, freebies. Hang on. Did it not detect the freebies? Oh, I don't think it did. Um, that could be because it's in capitals. <gasps> naughty, naughty. OK, well, I'll redact that. So we've got that's gone. So those are the options in there. Now, the other thing that I found particularly useful, and I could have done this with a slide from tonight, but if I had have done, you'd know what the unboxing is. and We can't have that. So I've got this. I don't know about you, but it annoys me intensely when I've got a QR code and I need to check where it goes that I have to get my phone out. You have a couple of options. If you use Text Sniper, Text Sniper can capture that and it will tell you what it is and you can get a URL put on your clipboard. But so can this. So if we go into the cog and go to detected data, there's no text in this, but it knows it's a barcode. So if we go to the barcode, it actually tells you what the URL is at the top, apps.apple.com, etc. And you can choose to redact it, which is useless. Copy it. You might want to copy it. The most useful is to quick look it or open it in a browser. Now, let's first of all have a look at quick looking it. So if I do that, it actually opens up a quick look at that, which is genius. That way I know it's correct. The other option you have in here is detected data barcodes and you could open it in a browser which it probably has done somewhere. Oh, and it's automatically opened it behind me here. So it's actually opened that. Now, if you're wondering what's going on in terms of this is the App Store and it's live and it, it's saying you've not downloaded it and yet I'm demoing it to you, I'm still on the beta. OK, so that is the barcode one. 
That is such a time saver. Love that. Right. Um, what else have we got in here? Right. Starting on the left hand side. So this is the dedicated library for all of the screenshots that you have taken. So you have an all shots on the left hand side and there's 310 of them. Then there's some that I favorited and at the moment I haven't favorited any of them. So let's let's favorite some of them and show you. So in here, you've got all of the options that you've seen and you can add to favorites and you can do that with just an F. Let's not have the, the, the diagram. No, let's have some money. Let, let's F that. So now I've got two favorites. All right. So as you're working, what I would love to see in here is a thumbnail track at the bottom, which you get with Snagit. And the thumbnail track is not your library in Snagit. It's you can manually put in there whatever you like while you're working on it. It's a it's like a scratch pad area. Love that. Would love that in here. But what I can do in here is I can either favorite things or I can create a folder and put them in a folder. And then that's my working folder. So you've seen the favorites and it says floating shots. There is one floating shot and there is. We dragged it across to the other screen, but there is a floating shot. And if I close that shot, it will disappear from there. So this is a way that you can track what shots you currently have floating wherever they are. Um, I have one folder for finance, which is all my PayPal stuff. And there's the bin, but there's nothing in the bin at the moment. So that one that we had that we annotated, I could delete that. And then that automatically puts it in the bin. You can then choose to empty the bin if you want to completely up to you, but that's what you can do with it. So if I wanted to take these two, for example, and I want to organize them, I can add two and you can see I've got a finance folder, but I don't have anything for Affinity Publisher. So I can say a new folder and then I can call that Affinity Publisher. Now, the thing with that is I can do it. And although that folder name is long, I can widen it. Um, but this is already saying it was a screenshot of Affinity Publisher. So what I could do instead is I could make a smart folder that folds the thing up entirely. But I could make a smart folder and that's basically a saved query. And the beauty of that is that I wouldn't need in here to manually add things to a folder. I could make it a smart folder instead. Right. So these are the library options at the top, then the folders, then the bin. Then within here, this is the working area where all of your images are. Now you can in here use the creation date to sort it. You can put favorites first. You can do it by ratings and you can choose whether it's ascending or descending. So these are the things that you can do in the library to display those shots. Then over here you have more options. So this is how you would float the shot. So if we wanted to float the one that's selected, you can click on there. The other thing you can do to float it is to double click it and it will float. You can then in here hide it. Now, if you choose to hide it, so we've hidden that one, it means you don't want it in the library, but you're not ready to put it in the bin. And then you get an extra folder and they are your hidden shots. So that is another option that you have. You can choose to favorite stuff. That one, I think, is already a favorite. So you you if it is a favorite, you can remove it from being a favorite. Uh, then in here, you can move it. So add to or remove from one of the folders. You can uh, delete it. So let me do that. So which one should we delete? Uh, let's delete that one. So let's delete it there and that will put it in the bin. So it doesn't automatically delete it. It does place it in the bin where you can recover it if you want. You then have the option to share it. And these are the same share options. Uh, again, they're coming from your system. You can have, you may have many, many more. I don't want many, many more. I'm, I'm desperately trying to get rid of the mail and messages, <laughs> but he's not having it. But that's the option that you have there. And then you can search. So you can do a search for something that's in the name of it. You've also got advanced search options. So if you have used anything like how to spot or Hazel, you'll be used to this kind of thing. Even the finder has an option like this where you can say where it contains this, but it doesn't contain that, where it's between different dates, whether it's this or it's this works exactly the same way. 
you also have an info panel, which is off by default. And what happens here is as you select an image, you will get over here not only the metadata, but what this will do is it will detect text as well. Now, obviously, that's a dialog box, so it's not brilliant. But if we look at the after hours one, it will actually detect the majority of the text, which I just think is so clever. And then, of course, that could be searched. So have we got any questions at that point? We have. You'll need to turn my mic on. I will, won't I? I'll shut you up for coughing. I know. <laughs> right, you're back. Right. First of all, there's been quite a few super chats. Second of all, um, you know when you're making an impression on people because Rene said, I'm starting to like this, even though I said I would never use it. <laughs> um, apart from that, yeah, there's been a couple of questions. Carol said, i find the questions, copy file path. Does that mean it would work with hook mark? And you obviously were not listening when I answered that question and said it should do. Right. <laughs> okay. Um... And two steps away, which is Ignacio, our friend Ignacio, wanted to know about redacting PDFs, but that's been answered in the chat. The problem with PDF Expert is not that it's not a good app. It's the fact that they went mental with their subscription. One, it's inordinately expensive. And two, you don't... Let me think. There's something to do with you don't get the iOS version or something unless it's subscription. You can get um, a perpetual license for the desktop, but not iOS. So um, I stopped using it. What do I use now? I started using Acrobat. That was because I had it and I didn't use it. Uh, but another one that's very, very good is Highlights. Uh, now, Highlights is also subscription, but you don't need that unless you want the advanced features. But yes... PDF Expert was fabulous, and then they lost their mind with the subscription. But there you go. Neil says this show is already costing me. He's just bought it. <laughs> I'm guessing he's talking about screen float. Yes, I would imagine so. Excellent. Excellent, Neil. Right. OK, then. So uh, what, did, what else did I have on here? Uh, oh, the settings. I was going to show you the settings, wasn't I? So let's go into the settings. This is where you can control. So I'll get rid of that so we can concentrate. This is where you can control everything. So obviously I have this launch at login. I don't have the menu bar showing normally. Having said that, um, I don't do that in here. I do that with Bartender. So I can get to the menu if I need to, but it's not usually displayed because I don't need it. Um, then you've got the appearance, whether it's a system default or whether you have it dark or light. And then you can reset the warnings if you want to. <coughs> now I'm coughing. It's your fault, you know. Right. Then there's the shortcuts. Now, I only have the two, the top one and the bottom one, because I very seldom need a capture with a timer. And if I did, I'd probably use the menu rather than try and remember yet another shortcut key. I never record video, but if you do and you use it a lot, then you could set up a shortcut key for it. And then you can choose a shortcut to hide any floating shots you have. Again, I don't particularly need that because I would just double click on them or I would change the opacity. So I only have the two set up in there, but you are able to set all five. Then when you come to capture, Obviously, the superpower of, of a screen float for me is the ability to float the screenshots. If I'm editing a screen cap, I'll probably use Snagit. And I, like many of you, have many, many different ways of working. So I've got screen float and these are all in use on a daily basis. Snagit. So when I take like the football um, result, that's taken with Snagit and it's edited. Oh, full disclosure, I edited an image. <clears throat> Just saying. But you, can, you can't see the join, can you? <laughs> Unlike some. So um, Snagit is another option. If I'm capturing something to document it in some kind of way, I'll probably snap it straight to Eagle. And for things like if I'm buying something from Amazon or particularly Audible, because they're lethal, I will take a screenshot of each step of the purchase process. But I only need them until I've checked the credit card and it's the right amount, which with Audible, it's a little bit random. 
Let's just say that it can be random. You know, like it's on it's on sale. It's one ninety nine, and then you buy it, and it's twenty ninety nine. That that, and the number of times I've been I've got onto them and said, you know, the price was wrong. Blah blah. No, you must have clicked the wrong page. And I never send the screenshot to start with because I want to see how far they're prepared to lie. And then I say, I've got a screenshot and I send that and here's the refund. So those kind of screen caps, I don't really want clogging anything else up. So I just use command shift and four and they go into a folder in Dropbox and that's it. Every now and then I will clear it out. Um, so I use many, many different apps and I'm sure you do as well. Did you have another question then? Because yeah. I've shut you up. What app did you recommend for, was it Highlight? Highlights, the PDF thing, yeah. which I'll show you. Um, I don't have the, the subscription version of this. Um, find Highlights. Um, the great thing with this is, it's this PDF reader here. Um, I only have the free version and it's great. Um, if you want to extract from your PDF, it's genius at that. It will give you a complete like summary of anything you've highlighted, which is fantastic. I love that. The reason I was seriously contemplating um, taking the subscription and the reason I didn't at the time was I was looking at the last time it was updated and I can't see that at the moment on here. How much is it? Yeah, it's twenty four ninety nine a um a year, um. But that all that gives me is the ability to export the highlights. And to be honest, I'm not really that worried. I just want to highlight stuff or look at a PDF. So that's what I use for that. I will put the link. Come on, copy, copy. I'll put the link in. There we go. So if you want to see a demonstration of highlights, let me know. Right. So. A superpower, the ability to float new shots. But if you want to use this in a way that you are not in the slightest bit bothered about um, floating your captures at the point that you capture them, if you want to do something else with them later, then you could take the float new shots off and it will still take screen captures like that, but it just won't float them. But if you went into your library, there it is, and you can double click to float it. So you could do that. Um, to me, its superpower is that it floats it, so I'm not doing that. You could also reduce the resolution. I do remove shadows on it because the shadows are huge. They used to be quite neat and tidy, but now they're absolutely huge. So um, that is something that I do remove. You can hold control while you're capturing and it will copy it to the clipboard. You have options for that in here so you can tell it what to do. Do you want to copy it and then float it? Flow, copy it, but don't float it. Copy it, but move it to the bin or copy it and delete it straight away. So they're really administrative options. Then if, you've, if you're taking a video, all of those are for images, but if you're taking a video, you can highlight the mouse cursor, you can highlight the mouse clicks, you can highlight the modifier keys. You can also decide whether you're recording audio input or whether you're recording audio output. Again, I don't bother with those in the slightest because I've got loopback. So my audio is taken care of elsewhere, so I've not even touched those. Now, in terms of the floating shots, this is where you control what you can do with them. So do you want them everywhere? You can also have work mode. Now, work mode might actually be useful. So if we enable work mode and we go into the shots library and we open that one up and let's open up that one as well. And I'm going to move that, which is our settings, because these are floating over the top of one another. And what I was saying was, if you wanted, if you were working with something behind these, you'd have to be closing them unless you have work mode enabled. And when you have work mode enabled, they disappear when you hover and they come back when you don't. So if you had something behind it, like the finder and you wanted to see it, you just hover over them and they disappear. That's work mode. So um, a bit awkward if you want to close them, isn't it? <laughs> That's the problem. So I'll take work mode off and then I can double click to close them. Right. 
you can choose never to hide the toolbar. Now, what that one would do is when you have something that you have captured. So I'm just going to capture a bit of the desktop there. This won't disappear. If I move away, it stays there. And that way you don't have to hover and then wait that fraction of a second for this to appear. So that's one thing that you could do with that. Never hide the toolbar. If you do hide the toolbar, that is what it would look like. And you would then have to hover over it before it would actually appear and then do whatever you want to do from there. So close it. This is where you decide what happens when you double click. So if you double click, I've chosen close shot, but you could choose to hide it, close it and move it to the bin or close and delete it. Now that looks a bit basic, but if you were to hold down a modifier key, so I'm holding the option key down, you can then decide what happens when you hold the option key and double click or the command key and double click or the shift key and double click, but not the control key. Nothing happens there. So I think you can just about hear me. I'm pressing the control key. Nothing is happening. But you do have three options. Then you've got the close button and you can decide what happens with that. Does it close it, hide it, move it to the bin or delete it? So I have that closing it again. Um, you can have a colour picker. I, I never use the colour picker, I must admit. But what you do with that, um, as it says, you hold down the option key and you right click and hold on a floating shot and you can pick the hex code from it. The reason that I don't do that is that I have colour slurp and I have that set up permanently. So all I need to do is my shortcut key for that, hover over it, click, that's on the clipboard. So I don't want to have to learn another way of doing it because I've already got one app that does that. But if you haven't got colour slurp, you could do that. But you'd have to take a screen cap of what it was you wanted the hex code for first. This is why we're not doing it. OK, so that's the floating shots. Then you've got options in the shots browser. Do you want the shot count, which I do, the status bar? Do you want spotlight to index them so you can find them? You could, for privacy, use touch ID or a password. I don't think touch ID is going to work for me. I've got Logitech keyboard and mouse. Um, and you can automatically empty the bin if you want to. You can change where the library location is. Um, I think this one is the default one. I just leave it alone. Now, you know my feelings on iCloud. We're not enabling iCloud Sync. We're not ever. But you could if you had this on more than one machine and that way your libraries would be in sync. Not happening. I've had six months peace, haven't I, with, with iCloud by not using it. So that one's working well. And then the tip jar is the options that you saw in the App Store where you can give a tip if you would like to. And those are the options that you have in ScreenFloat. So I absolutely love ScreenFloat. Mike keeps forgetting it. He, he keeps taking a screenshot and then opening it up in preview. Don't you? I do. They can't hear you, but there you go. I've, I've turned you on. Admit it. I do. You do. Naughty yes. Mike. Naughty Mike. OK, so have we got any questions about that? Um, mm, 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 no. Carol says, is there a PDF app that will allow you to place add places for the reader to enter text into? There's been a couple of suggestions in the chat. That is one of the holy grails. Um, InDesign does it brilliantly, but InDesign's expensive. Acrobat does it brilliantly, but Acrobat's expensive. And the others... They keep promising it. I think PDF Expert promised that about five years ago. Um, it's a form situation that you, where you put a field in it. Um, Acrobat can do it automatically. Uh, one thing that might work is Word. If it's a form you're looking for, for somebody to fill in, um, you could do that. And I, she I, says PDF Pen Pro. Uh, but that's Smile Software and they're a bit... I've never, I've, ne I've never had a good experience with their support. Let's put it like that. Um, so I, I did have that many years ago. I had the pro version, but I, I didn't carry on with it because there was just the support wasn't great for me. Um, your mileage may vary, but mine wasn't great. A oh, question from Kimmy. I put the poster on just so you're not looking at my desktop. Carry on. Should I get the bundle with ScreenFlow, Yoink and Transloader? OK, that's a bit dodgy as well. Uh, let's go back to the main screen and show you the app store. Right. The developer has other apps. So if we go in here and look for ScreenFloat, 
um, and we go in there. There is a bundle. There's three apps. I don't have Transloader. Um, that allows you to start downloads from your iOS device, I think, which sounded great and I meant to get it and I never did. I do have Yoink. Uh, Yoink is an app that sits, it, it puts a, a floating window, basically, on the edge of your screen and you can move stuff there. It came in with Lion when we had full screen apps and that I do have, but I must admit, I don't use it much at the moment. The one thing you have to be careful about when you're buying these things in bundles is if you look at this, there are three apps in this bundle. I've already got Yoink and I've already got ScreenFloat. So if I wanted to, and I quote, complete my bundle, I could buy Transloader for $9.99. Alternatively, I could give them £20 and a penny. There's something wrong with that. There is definitely something wrong with that. The complete my bundle should be cheaper than the three together, particularly if I've got two. So if I clicked this 20, that's what I get charged for something that's 9.99. It's ludicrous. So I don't use Transloader. I have used Yoink, but now I use Dropover. So you can see it puts a little shelf here. This is Yoink. It puts a little shelf there and you can drag and drop things to it. But I'm using Dropzone for that. So if it was me, I probably wouldn't. But then I probably bought that years ago. But if you are trying to complete a bundle, be very, very careful where you click, because this is this is the audible problem where they're saying to you, you click the wrong bit. No, I didn't. I clicked the bit that was cheaper. But if I click nine ninety nine, that's what I'll pay. If I click 20, that's what I'll pay. So just be careful with it. OK, we got any more questions? No. Right. OK. So let's get back into there. Oh, freebies. Right. Uh, this is something that I, I, I think I'm sure I looked at it before, but I don't ever remember recommending it. It's completely free. It is a camera for your iPhone that enables you to do a lot more than the built in camera. And it's called Blackmagic Camera. Um, that's the, the QR code. I'll give you a second to get hold of that. It is completely free, so might as well download it as not. And while I was researching that, I thought, oh, these are pretty. And I found some um, free folders and free icons. Uh, as you can see, it says Blackmagic Design. So these these free things, um, they, they're actually from somebody on Behance, which is they've just brought out Behance Pro, you know. Oh. I, meant, I meant to discuss that with you. Um, with me? Yes, with you, because money was involved. <laughs> not, the, not the map fighters. <laughs> not the map fighters, no, with you, dear. Um, didn't want to just put it on the credit card, just saying. So um, a designer has created these and they're available free of charge for download. So these are the icons in all the different sizes, in all the different colours. So you'll get that. Uh, if you've not used Behance, it's like a portfolio site. And our last one, which isn't free, but oh, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. Is Divi. Um, Divi is the um, the theme of our choice for us on all of our WordPress installs. And Elegant Themes is having a sale because they are turning 16 and it's the biggest sale they've ever had. You can currently get 70 percent off. Now, if you already have it, don't turn off. Not just yet, because you can get up to 70% off additional services. So not only do we have Divi, the theme, but we also have Divi AI and Divi Teams, Divi Cloud Library. All of those are add-on services. And at the moment, there's a discount on them. So Michael, put the link in for that, won't yeah, you? Yeah, links are in. Excellent, excellent. Right, and now we're going to have a look at getting productive in Obsidian. Um, particularly, we're looking at a time management matrix. But to explain the time management matrix, we're actually going to see two different ways of visualizing in um, Obsidian. Now, Obsidian is our note taking app of choice. Even Mike uses it every now and then, alternatively. But you do, don't you? Every now and then. Yeah, not frequently, <laughs> but every now and then. Right, you've made the point. <laughs> You don't believe in the daily note. This is where you fall down, but never mind. Right. Um, it's completely free and it's completely text based um, because it's text based. There's no lock in. You can read your Obsidian based content in any app whatsoever with no conversion translation or anything else either. 
But just because it's text based doesn't mean that you're left in a left lost in a text based maze where you're looking at the text and you can't read it and whatever. No, you can visualize. So the two visualization methods that I'll be looking at, the first one is a Kanban board. So think Trello, Asana, anything, even Notion has boards, a board view. And a board view is where you're usually moving your work in progress from the left to the right. So on the left, you'd have a backlog. And when you start working on it, you would move it to the work in progress. And then you would move it from the work in progress to complete. And then you would move it from complete to the archive. Um, we do actually have some boards for after hours. We have a whole board with, with a certain number of episodes on it for season four. And who knows where that will lead? But we do. So Kanban board is something that we use. The other visualization that we're looking at is the Eisenhower matrix, also known as Covey's quadrants, depending on your age, I think, if you're old enough to remember Dwight Eisenhower. Um, but it was Dwight Eisenhower and it was because he said he had two types of problem, urgent and important. And the urgent aren't important and the important are never urgent. That, that sums up my life. Don't know about yours. It, yeah. It's either it's on fire or I just fancy vegging out. <laughs> So because of that, um, he created this system and it's, it's quadrants. So quadrant one, if you visualize what we're going to create in a text-based notes app is a fully visual quadrant diagram. Quadrant one is in the top left corner. And that's where that's things that are urgent and important. That's when I've forgotten to pay the credit card bill and it's due tomorrow, isn't it? That's urgent and it's important. So it requires immediate attention. It says it's linked to important goals, which would be nice if it was. But, you know, if I've just forgotten the credit card bill, I guess the important goal is not, not to have to pay. Well, it was £25 years ago. I don't know how much it is now. You know, you get fined if you don't pay it. Yeah. Used to be £25. Only happened to me once and I rang up and, and <laughs> begged, basically. I did the same. <laughs> I've never done it before and I won't do it again. Please don't charge me £25. I was a student. What could I say? I couldn't afford £25. That was two weeks petrol. Uh, they let me off. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that would be in quadrant one. Obviously, the trick is to live in quadrant two, where you're not dealing with anything that's urgent, but things are important. So in my genuine quadrant matrix that I have, in quadrant two, I have currently... Uh, that return, which is was due at the end of February, and you get six weeks to pay it. And I have um, a company's house thing that I need to do. And they're not on fire yet. They're not urgent, but they are important. So those are the kind of things that you put in there. They're important, but it says you don't have an immediate deadline. No, I do have a deadline, but, you know, the deadline for one's May and the, the deadline for the other is April. So they're in quadrant two. Quadrant three is urgent, but not important. So that's not the credit card, is it? What, what would be urgent, but not important, Mike? Urgent, mm. but not important. I would say the Tesco order, but then we'd starve. No, we probably wouldn't. We could probably manage for a week. Mm. But, you know, if you've not put it in and it needs to be put in in the next hour, then that would be in quadrant three. And then there's quadrant four, which is neither urgent nor important. I've got a good example for this, watching Netflix. Not that we could watch Netflix because we don't have Netflix. We did contemplate sharing your mother's password, but that didn't end well. They caught <laughs> they on that, before. Yeah, I know. That's, all... <laughs> That's inconvenient. They banned it before we got that far. But never mind. So quarter four is just wasting time. I know, scrolling social. Scrolling social media. That, that, there you go. That's a quadrant four. And what that looks like in the quadrant diagram is that. So at the top, we have urgent and not urgent. And at the side, we have important and not important. And you look at the top and you look at the side to decide which quadrant is which. That is what it looks like. And what you should be doing with the list of to do's that are in there is if they're urgent and important, do them. If they're not urgent, but they're important, plan when you will do them. If they're not important, they say delegate them. But I, I, I would I think this is very much focused on work, don't you? I don't think these are particularly personal tasks because, you know, much as I would love to delegate things like cleaning the toilet. Oh, I could delegate it to you. There you go. <clears throat> now, you see, that's that's important, but not. Oh, well, yeah, it could be urgent, but not important. 
Oh, this could get very confusing, couldn't it? But that's that's the idea. You eliminate the, the watching of Netflix. According you... to Jammy, urgent but not important, providing Lady Lola w with chicken. Uh, yes, but for Lady Lola, that's important and <laughs> urgent. <laughs> that's a quadrant one. <laughs> She's very partial to sausages on a trot, isn't she? She is. She, she has everybody trained, all the other dog owners, take treats out for her. I don't know how she does it, but she does. Many years ago, Maya was the same, wasn't he? Many years ago, um, this lady that Mike used to see in the mornings when he, when he took Maya out, her dog died. And she said, um, oh, she, she's left you her liver in the will. <laughs> <laughs> and she came round with like a huge bag of liver, didn't she? Mm. Oh, our Sammy's, what can we say? So that's the idea. Now, coffee is the guy who is famous for the seven habits of highly effective people. And what he did was he took that Eisenhower matrix and extended it and expanded it. So it forms the basis of his work as well. And as he says in his quote, quadrant two is the heart of effective personal management. So quadrant two is where you should be living. Definitely not quadrant four. But quadrant two is where you're doing the important work and you're planning when it happens. Now, this is not just something that I've manufactured out of thin air, obviously. Uh, Eisenhower started it. Coffee carried it on. And there are plenty of dedicated apps. This is just a random selection of what I found when I looked for quadrants or Eisenhower Matrix in the App Store. And there's a whole range of them. Various prices. Some are one offs. Some are subscription. They may work better for you. Uh, that one is one that I've tried. I did used to use that. The reason that I probably wouldn't now is that I'd be duplicating stuff. I'd have to, the stuff that's already in Obsidian, I'd have to duplicate it in here and then I'd have to keep the two in sync. And that's why I don't bother. If, if Obsidian can do it, even if it's not quite as polished, I will keep it in Obsidian. And that way everything's together. So let's have a look what that looks like. And I have my obsidian, but I'm starting completely from scratch. So although I've got my vault, it's set up in my vault. What I am going to do is create a completely new vault. So I'm starting here with absolutely nothing. So I'm going to create a new vault. Um, let's call it matrix. There we go. And I need somewhere to put it. So I should probably put it where all my other stuff lives in Obsidian. So uh, let's put it in there. Now, I can't remember if I needed a folder or not. Oh, well, I'll do a folder anyway. I don't want it all mixed up with the rest of it. So we'll stick it in there. There we go. Right. So I'm creating a completely new vault. There's nothing in this at all. I've not been through the onboarding in this in ages. Right. This is what it looks like. I don't particularly need the graph view. There's the welcome page. Don't particularly need that either. But there are things that I do need to make this work. So it would probably be a jolly good idea if I could see my notes, wouldn't it? Because I've got a whole list of things I need to make this work. Right. There we go. So first thing I need to do is install a plugin. So when you are in Obsidian, you have core plugins and you have community plugins. Core plugins are from the developers themselves. This that I need is a community plugin and you need to turn on support for community plugins. Now, all of these are tested, but they do warn you that they are community plugins. I've never, ever had a problem with any of them. So I've turned that on and I'm going to browse all of these plugins. Now, there's 3000 of these plugins. There's lots of them. But I'm looking for the one called Kanban. And that's it there. So this shows me what that looks like. And here's my columns, the backlog, the to do, what's happening in progress and what's done. I then choose to install it. And it literally takes a couple of seconds. Once it's installed, I then need to enable it. So it's now enabled. You can then take a look at the options if you want and see how everything works. I don't think I need to do that. I think I left everything alone. And OK, now at this point, this is my welcome page. But what I'll do is I'm using command and P, which is my command palette, and I'm putting in Kanban. And because I haven't got any Kanbans at the moment, it's saying create a new board. 
and that's what I want. So I'm now creating a new board. Now there is with my theme, which is the default because I've only just created this and I've not done anything else with it, have I? Uh, but if we go there, you can see it does say add list. So what I'm going to do here is create my quadrant one. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll create a standard one of these. So the standard would be uh, backlog and I'm pressing enter. And then the next one would be work in progress. The next one would be complete. And then you could put an archive if you want. But usually that's enough for that. And I can just close that. And then this becomes my Kanban, which is three columns. So let's have a look. How about putting in Macbytes after hours for next week? There is that dealt with. Um, what else would I need? Um, oh, special project, special project. You know, the thing we're announcing at the end that we should make the show about nine hours long and see who's still there at the end. But that would be cheating. Right, um, I could put another one in there. Mac bites after hours, and that's today. You can move these around, and of course, this one is currently a work in progress. This one, let's say we've completed it, and you literally move them across like that. What you can do in here is if I put in two square brackets, I'm going to link to something. So let me link to that welcome page. And now in here, that's a link and it links me to the welcome page. That is a simple Kanban board, as simple as it gets. What I'll do now is we'll take that away from being untitled or will we? We will. Where's the rename? Pete there? asked what Obsidian is. I've said it's a note taking app. Is that too simplistic? It's a note-taking app. It uses Markdown. Yeah, I got it correct. Um, it's a network note-taking app. We did an entire series on it. Can you find the first I'll put, show? Yeah, I put links further up in the chat. I think we covered it for about six months. Every yeah. week we looked at a, a different part of it. Um, it is the it is the notes app that I use. It absolutely is the notes app that I use. Um, this is a very cut-down, limited version of it. Um, if you want to see mine, probably not today, it's probably got my finance stuff in it. But if you, if you want to see a fully fledged version of what that would look like, then let me know. You can, and a lot of people are doing this because Obsidian is completely free. You can uh, import from Evernote. So as long as you can get your stuff out of Evernote, you can import it into Obsidian, which we did cover. We covered taking stuff in from, Obsid uh, from Evernote and somewhere else, and I can't remember where. But we did. But yes, it's a notes app. Um, it's local first. It does synchronize. It does work on iOS. It does work on Android. Um, is there a Windows version? I think there is a Windows version. Um, it's at, You'll find it at obsidian.md if you want to know more about it. Do we have any other questions? Uh, I thought there was one. Um, no, Jamie's asked a question, but it's totally irrelevant to <laughs> the subject. That's you told. <laughs> Well, I can give you the question. Save it for later. Okay. Surprise me later. Right. So what I'm going to do now, that's my Kanban. But now what I want to do is make my um, Eisenhower matrix. I do that with the Kanban plugin. Now, I've now got two options in my control panel because I can create a new board, but I can also toggle between the Kanban view and the Markdown view. So just to show you what that gives you, that's not doing anything at all at the moment, is it? You're not doing anything at all at the moment. Hmm. Never mind. Let's go straight on to the other one. But it would show it you. Um, come on, don't be awkward. Uh, let me see it in the finder and then I can show you what it looks like as text. So this is a markdown file. And when we open it, it's displaying it as a Kanban. But this is what it actually looks like. So this is what I meant when I said it doesn't matter if you stop using Obsidian. You can still read that. All this stuff at the bottom would be ignored, but you can still read that. And if you want to say that that is dealt with, you can actually just put an X in there and that would update the whole thing. So it's just markdown files, a collection of markdown files. So we need with our Kanban to make another new board. And this one is going to be our quadrants. So we want a quadrant one, two, three and four. 
OK, those are our quadrants and we want to add some cards to that. So in quadrant one, we have pay credit card. Right. Which I, I, te I teased you the other day, didn't I? I'm sat here nursing my credit card bill and Mike had his phone out and he pays it via the, um, the, the, the blinking app. You, you've got to blink or wink. At the, that's the thing. Um, and, and he said, do you want that paying? And I said, yes. And I handed it over to him and he, he starts taking his glasses off so he can blink at the app. And I'm laughing away and he doesn't know what I'm laughing at. It was a zero balance, wasn't it? Mm. Mm, they didn't need paying at all. But the paying the credit card bill would be in quadrant um, one. Quadrant two would be things that you're planning ahead. So like I said, company accounts. And that return was another one. Right. Quadrant three is where uh, it's important, but it's not urgent. What would be important and not urgent? Let's leave that one because I want to put scrolling social. Right. Now, the problem is that it's not quadrants. Does it matter? A lot of people up to this point have used Kanban and they're quite happy with that. It's not quadrants, but, you know, it's as near as you get and they're not bothered. Um, I could probably do that. To be honest, I haven't done. Up to this point, I've only used a Kanban as a Kanban. Right. The next step. So step one, install the Kanban plugin. I've got a demo board. So this is going to be my Eisenhower matrix. The next thing I need to do. So if you could put the link in for this, Mike, this is the link to the Kanban plugin and the in-depth article. This is has been created free of charge by somebody called TFT Hacker. He used to be known as Rome Hacker, had a falling out with Rome and became Tools for Thought Hacker. And all it is is CSS. If I show you what that looks like, that is what it looks like. So if you read CSS, you'll understand what that is. If you don't, doesn't matter in the slightest. All it is, is CSS. And that's all there is of it. 59 lines of it. That is what I've just copied to the clipboard. What I then need to do is put it in the right place. Where is the right place? I hear you ask. So going into my settings. I am going to appearance and right down the bottom. You have the ability to insert CSS snippets. Um, at the moment, it hasn't found any and it keeps them in a hidden folder. Um, the hidden obsidian folder in a snippets folder, which you can just get to by clicking the button. And there it is. Now, obviously, there is nothing there at the moment. So this is what I'll do. Now we'll go into my editor. So I can see it and I will save it and I will save it into that folder. So it's the snippets folder. Doesn't matter what you call it. I'll call it matrix.css. Doesn't matter what you call it at all. And save it. Now I can close this and there it is in there. Despite the fact it's in there, if you look back in Obsidian, it's not there. That's because you need to reload it. So I've refreshed the view of the folder. But it's still not going to apply because I need to make sure I put the toggle on. Now it's applying. So now I can come out of here and this should look like a matrix, only it doesn't. There's one more thing you need to do to make that work. And that is at the moment it's called Untitled Kanban. If I go into this and I rename it, so um, let's call it my coffee quadrant. In fact, let's call it quadrants. Quadrants, even that won't do it. But if I put E dash matrix at the end and press enter, boom, got a Kanban board. And this works exactly the same as if it's in columns, but it works between them. So my scrolling social, I could move that over here. Uh, and if I've done it, I could actually mark that as done. So I can edit the card from here. I can create a new note from the card. I can duplicate this. I can move it to the top and do all kinds of things with it. Let's say I've done it. All right, then I'm going to archive the card and it disappears. Um, there are many things that you can do with this. In this view, it works exactly the same as the Kanban. It's just that the CSS, which is a cascading style sheet, styles it differently. So it looks like four quadrants. So as I've said, you can add a card. So um, let's put pay the gas bill. They charge us and we don't use it, do we? 
Yeah, so that'll be important. So pay the gas bill. If I then decide I've paid the last month and I've got three weeks for this, then I can organise it and put it where it should be. So let's move it over there. I can also here, so let's say something like the company accounts. Let's say the company accounts is more important than just reading the words company accounts. I'm going to need to do something with it. So what I can do with that, instead of just editing the card, I can actually create a new note. And what that will do is create a note and I can put more details in. So more details of what I need to do for the company accounts. And I can put telephone numbers in here. I can put images in here. I can put whatever I want in here. Beauty of it is if I close that and I'm looking at it in here, this is a link. And if I click it, it will open the company accounts. If I want to open it side by side or with it, then what I can do is I can do this and I can switch these around. They can be with each other. They can be next to each other. They can be one on top of the other. Doesn't matter. Um, that's why I use Obsidian. It is so flexible. I, I live in Obsidian. Everything is in Obsidian. Mike's less so, but that's the idea. So I could actually link to, I think we had the welcome one, didn't we? Why has that got nothing in it? Um, let's delete that and start again. So let's say on this one, I want to put the card title on the other one. Once I've put my square brackets in, it gives me a list of all the pages I have in there. So if I want this to link to the welcome, I can do that. I can then outside of that put update welcome page on website. And still this will be a link that will go I hold the command key down, it will open it up in a new tab and it's taking me to that window. And as you've seen, you can delete these things from in here. So I've created a new note. I can copy a link to that card if I want to and put that somewhere else. Uh, I can duplicate it. So if I wanted to say this one is for the summer quarter, it's not quite, is it quarters for the gas bill? I know yes. it's, not, it's not for the electric. They, they charge yeah, you monthly. Is. But that's that will be the summer one. Um, so that was duplicating it. I can move it to the top. So you could organise it that way or you could move these around in any order that you want. So you can manually organise them. Uh, I've also got here move to the bottom. I can archive the card and I can actually delete the card or I can add a date to the card. So if this is due, say, the 28th, right, then you've got a date on it as well. And that is how I do actually use this. I organise it. Now, this isn't my vault and it doesn't have daily pages in it. But if I added a daily page, so I'm going to create a new note and a daily page would look something like that. And then within there, I have a template that I apply to it. Let me see if I can just copy that quickly from somewhere. Uh, give or take, that will do. It's not the right date, but never mind. This is from the 27th. Oh, that would make it right if I just change that to the 27th. There we go. So that's what my daily note looks like. And what I do is I have this. I have pages open like these on the left. And I put my quadrant at the bottom. So I'm trying to get that at the top. And that is what it looks like. So this one I narrow down and then these look like that. That's a little bit big, actually. Um, doesn't look like that. on my. Oh, it's because of the screen size. It, I, I, it's, I take this down. I can see where, on, when my screen is full screen um, that that works, that it, it does fit on there. And then I've got my daily page here and I've got my what I'm working on at the bottom. And then I just mark them off as done or not done or whatever. So do we have any questions on that? Um, Tracy says, could you say where you got the stormy loud lighthouse picture? Um, I can. I will have to go into my presentation so the screen will go black unless I put you on the show poster. Give me one second. Let's go back in. Lighthouse picture. Where's the lighthouse picture? It's either Microsoft or it is Elements at Envato. One or the other. So it's Thursday, that wasn't it? Let me have a look. I think it was Microsoft, Microsoft stock in PowerPoint. Um, it must have been because I haven't put the link, so it must have been. 
but that's where you'll find that. Okay, right, so we don't have any more questions about that, do we? No. Not? Right, okay then. Oh, Pete says, have you done away from using Notion for this sort of organising? Um, I have never used Notion for basic tasks. I would use Notion for stuff like the show, and we do still use Notion for the show. So anything that's shared work will be in Notion. Uh, what I would use this for and what I use Obsidian for is Obsidian isn't in, it wasn't intended. It wasn't developed to be shared. They're working on that, but I don't feel the need. So it's personal stuff. So it is pay the credit card bill. You know, it's stuff that I would do on a daily, daily basis. I do have a task manager, but sometimes because I live in Obsidian and I'm living out of my daily note, I just want to see at the bottom what I need to do today. So this would probably never have been in Notion. I have projects in Notion, but they are shared projects. They are the big things that are in Notion because otherwise it's just not worth the effort. It's not worth the effort for me to add a project, add all the meta to it and then remember to go back and deal with it. It's just not worth it. If it's a big thing like an after hours. So what's happening right now while we're broadcasting is that Mike is making notes in there of things that I need to be aware of later, like all of the super chats that have come in that I, that I missed because I'm talking. So they would that would be shared. There would be no point Mike putting that in Obsidian because his Obsidian is totally separate from my Obsidian. If it's shared, it's in Notion. If it's not, it's probably in Obsidian. Right. Are we all right there? Yeah. OK, then. Right. Let's get rid of that. Um, preview of next week. I've got another visualisation for next week that has proved to be amazingly life changing. Um, it's a visualisation that works on time blocking. So next week in Obsidian, we'll be looking at time blocking. Right, let me close that down and get back into here. So what you need to do for that to work, don't be looking for an e-matrix. You need the Kanban plugin, which allows you to visualise in two different ways. One, you can create a standard Kanban board. But to do what I did with the Eisenhower matrix stroke coffee quadrants is I created a Kanban board. Then I installed TFT Hackers CSS Snippet and I enabled it. And then the last thing you need to do is put the word eMatrix in the title of the file. And that is what pings it to be a quadrant diagram. And I am using that. My, in fact, if you look at my Obsidian, it would look nothing like yours, would it? No. Because I've got this timeline view in it for time blocking. I've got the matrix view. I've got a Kanban going on. So although it is plain text <laughs> and it's readable as plain text, it's very visual because I'm a visual person. Right. OK. So, oh, Affinity Publisher. We like Affinity Publisher, don't we? Oh, very silent from Mike. I don't think he does like Affinity Publisher. <laughs> oh, come on. It did involve Excel at one it's point. It's all right. Oh, once more with enthusiasm. Well, well right. when I tried to duplicate a page, it all went wrong. Oh, you did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> and, and you spent more than the um, strictly limited 20 minutes trying to fix it because you didn't want to admit it, did you? Mm. No. No. Right. Well, what we're doing with this is we're going back many, many years, more years than I'd like to think, uh, to my childhood. And Mike's childhood, when the pair of us, although we didn't know each other, did we, uh, were very keen on top trumps. Top trumps were a staple of our childhood. Um, a staple, staple of our childhood. I had the 1978 World Cup edition and several more football packs. And what did you have? I think I had a football one. Um, I think me and my brother had superheroes. I, I remember Special Powers 10. No, I didn't have that. I, I remember a, a car one. That was probably my dad. Oh, yeah, I think we might have had a car one. Maybe it came free somewhere because I don't think I'd have bought it, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> right. So, uh, Top Trumps. We have created our own version. Let me know if you have these in the States. Mm. We've made our own game called Trumped. Can you imagine where the branding came from for that? I can't. No, 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 no. strange, isn't it? Um, so we've made our very own version. 
our very own version of cards. Tracy's never heard of top trumps. Tracy, oh good grief! <laughs> you've got you you've got to research it now. You've got to go and research it. The idea of it is, as you look at those cards there, um, the idea of top trumps is which card trumps the other card. Now, when I was a kid, and I know you had the same set. You must have done. When the cards were dealt, if you had Joe Corrigan, you were in. He was six foot four and a half was Joe Corrigan, wasn't he? He was the tallest keeper in the league, <laughs> tallest player in the league. So if you had him and somebody had a card and they thought, oh, you know, I've got a player here and he's six foot one and they pick height as what to compare with, Joe Corrigan, Manchester City, would trump everybody else. That's how the game works. But Carol's how... not heard of it. Kim thinks it's a video game. No, it's not a video game. It's physical cards. It, it literally, they came in a plastic box and there was probably, I've done 20 cards, but there was probably maybe 40 cards, 30, 40 cards in a pack, something like that. So what you had to do was, if you know, if you got somebody and the player was 39, you'd pick that as the age because 39 is probably going to beat somebody else's. And that's the idea. And then when it when it was trumped, that was what you would say, hence trumped. So how would this work in Affinity Publisher? Well, if you look at those cards, we've got the brand on there and that's the same on each one. We've These got... jammies loving. <laughs> um, you've got headshots for the players. You've also got in the lower right hand corner of the player, the club badge. You've got the player's name underneath that. You've got the town, the um, team that they play for and then you have the four elements that are going to be used for comparison in the game so who scored the most goals uh, who weighs the most who's the tallest who's the oldest all of that is going to need a data merge but notice the background of the card they are the team colors that's the tricky part but we can do this anyway Oh, Neil learnt everything he knows about cars and planes. I didn't have planes either. I do remember a car one. I've got to be my dad. Got to be my dad. I think he wanted a boy, you know. But he got the best of both worlds because I was a right tomboy. Mum could have been disappointed if she wanted somebody she could dress up in pink ribbons because that didn't work. Right, let's go in and do it. So I am going to go into Affinity Publisher, starting completely from scratch, although I do have some data. Right, uh, we are going to need some of these. Uh, let me get that out of the way. And the text frame out of the way. We need the data merge, but not right now. So what I'm doing here, don't need the states either. That crashes it right and left. Um, we have file new. So th let's go into this. Right, what I'm choosing in here, they're cards. Uh, so I've made them A6, which is a quarter of a size of A4 or a quarter of letter size, approximately. Um, however, I need to make a lot of changes in here. Uh, everything is OK there, but I don't need facing pages because these are going to be printed out as individual cards. So take the facing pages off. Although I'm making 20, it's a data merge, so I only need one page. Colour depends on if you're having them printed somewhere or you're printing them yourself. I'm going to leave that at RGB. I do need a transparent background, though. Why do I need a transparent background? If you know, put it in the chat. You can go first. Why do I need a transparent background? Why do you need a transparent background? You don't just re repeat it back to me like a parrot, Mike. So that the colour behind it doesn't shine through. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Right. So we'll move, move swiftly <laughs> on from that. I need a transparent background. <laughs> then I need margins. But remember, it's A6 and A6 is quite tiny. Um, it's... 10.5 centimetres, which must be about, what, four inches? Three point something inches by six, six inches. So it's quite small. Um, so I don't want these being more than 10 all the way round. So let's pop that on there, which will lock it and put 10 all the way round. Uh, then a bleed. Don't need a bleed. I'm not sending it out for print, so it doesn't need a bleed. So those are the settings that I need that make them... They're bigger than playing cards, but big enough that, you know, small enough a child could, could use them. And then create the file. And that is what I have. Right. And those are my margin. That does look mighty big for my margin. 
I think it's because I'm zoomed in. When I've done this before, I wasn't zoomed in. OK, so let's uh, move it on from here. Right. I need, first of all, to create some placeholders for the content. So the first thing I'm going to need is a rounded rectangle. And I'm going to put a rounded rectangle in the background. It needs to go up to there, which should tell us why we need it transparent, because this is going to be filled with different colours. But they need to have a rounded corner on them. So I have that transparent. I don't want white sticking out at the corner. Now, at the moment, that is a shape. And obviously I can put different colours in it. But that won't work because Affinity Publisher does not let me be conditional at the Affinity Publisher end. There's no way in Affinity Publisher to say if the team is Wombleton, make the background green. It can't do that. That has to come from the Excel end. So how that works is I have a range. Which I will show you. Uh, I have projects and in there I have trumped. Right. This is the demo. This is the completed demo. This is the data. And that is the affinity document. Uh, no, hang on. That's that's the designer one with the logo. And this is the finished thing. And this is my data. I also have backgrounds, club badges and headshots. This is the data that's referred to in this spreadsheet. So I have 20 headshots and I have range of club badges and I have the backgrounds and these are what the backgrounds look like. You can see they've already got corners on them. Those are the backgrounds because I can't make a color conditional within Affinity Design, within Affinity Publisher. What I have done is created the colors that I need outside of Affinity Publisher and I will refer to them in the data. I will show you the data when we hook it up. But that is why I have this here. And what I need to do with the shape is to convert it to a picture frame. And that puts a cross in it and lets me know it's a picture frame. Next thing I need to do is to put in a rectangle that is covering the area that is marked out by the margins. And that needs to be white. So let's make that white. That's not white. There is white. And that's going to be where I put all of the other content. Right. What other content do I need? And if I was looking at the right uh, instructions, I'd be fine, wouldn't I? Right. Here we go. So I need to make at this point um, a placeholder for the headshot which is also a rectangle, only I think I have them square and it was 70. So I will draw that out and then place it and scale it. So I wanted it to be 70. So that's the right size. And then placement wise, I had it in the center and I had it at 14. So all the way up there at 14. So I'm just going to type in 14 there. That's got it in the right place. Right. Uh, next thing I need, I need to put somewhere for the badge and the badge was also square. That was 19 millimeters square. So. Where are we? Not quite. 19. That looks mighty big, doesn't it? I'm sure it was 19. No, I'm looking at the wrong one. Hang on. Where are we? Did I put the badge in? Oh, never mind. Let's just decide what, what size we're having it. It goes there. It's square, but probably about that size. So we have the background color. We have a white placeholder. We have a placeholder for the headshot. We have a placeholder for the badge. Next thing I need to do is to put a table in here. Now, if I draw out where I need the table. Uh, in fact, the table's not what comes next. Naughty, naughty. Uh, it is the player's name and I'm going to put that in as a text block there. And I, I also need the club, so let's put the club underneath. And what I do need to do with these before I do anything else is make sure that the font size is correct. So for that. 
This bit here is 22 points. And this bit here is 12, which it, it already is. So that's correct. And that leaves the table underneath it. Now, if I draw the table out, that's probably about right. Um, I don't have the right number of columns. I should have two and I've got too many rows. So I need four rows. I just type that in and I need two columns. And then I can play about making that bigger if I need it bigger and deeper if I need it deeper. Now, what I do need to do with this, it would be a little bit harsh if in there it was black around the edges. So in my table here, I need the entire table, which is this bit. And in the stroke here, I'll make it 0 0.5, but I'll make it a gray. So if we go in here, something like 25, 30 percent is probably enough. And what that will look like is that if I turn that off, you can see it's much lighter than, than a black would be. All right. Next thing I need to do uh, is to put in the text that I can actually put in. So we had in here, I can't remember the order it was in now, but we had the age, the weight, the height and the goals scored. So uh, I'll bring, let's put age in, obviously mighty big and height and weight and goals. Now, obviously far, far, far too big. So let's get that down to manageable. And in there, I want that so it is centered vertically. And over here, there'd be an almighty gap. So what I need to do with that is to align it to the right. And these columns, when I get the data in it, I want aligned to the left, which it already is. But they would be too close. So then selecting the whole lot and going back into our table, in the cells in here, we have insets. And if I do that, it gives us a little bit of breathing room there. So we can take that out of the way. What else is missing at this stage? There's one thing missing, and that's the branding. The branding I actually have. That was this file. Uh, I'll open it so you can see it. So it was an affinity designer file and it still is an affinity designer file. All right, that is it. So hand drawn by my loving self, that was. So that is an affinity designer file and I'm just going to drag and drop it into here, which is, I'm going to have to undo that because that's filled it in the background. Uh, should I just do a place? That wouldn't do it, would it? Uh, why did this work in rehearsals? If I do that, it opens separate and then I need to paste it in. So I don't really need to do that. That I definitely don't need to do. Uh, let's close that down. I know what we'll do. We'll put a placeholder for it up there like that. That's not a placeholder. Good grief. Let me place it and see if that works. Right. Place. And here's the demo file. There it is. Let's see if that works. No, you put it in. Oh, you're letting me do it. Oh, but you're going to delete stuff. Don't do that. That's better. Right. So we have that which needs to go up there. And it was quite small and it was in the corner. But I had to be careful that it wasn't outside the card edge. So it needs to be in the card edge. And I think I actually had it like over the player there like that. So it looks like that. Excellent. Right. Are we OK with that so far? Because we're about to, to get it. We're Looks about like yeah. we're about to hook it up to the data. So to make this work, I have already created the data. Uh, let's go into Excel and show you the data. So we have the names in column A and B. So A is the first name. B is the surname. Then we have the age, the height, the weight and the goal scored. So the first name and surname are going to be concatenated, joined together with a space between them for the name. Then we're going to have the club underneath that in 12 point font. The comparison data that's going in the table is C, D, E and F. Then we've got the tricky bit, which is the club badge 
And this is the location of the club badge. So it's users, Elaine G, Dropbox, projects, demo trumped, club badges, Seaford Town. So if you wanted to see that, here's the files, club badges, Seaford Town, and that's what the badge looks, looks like. Then we've got backgrounds. So if I zoom this across, you can see again, it's coming from users, Elaine G, Dropbox, projects, demo trumped, backgrounds. So up one level, backgrounds, Seaford Town. And those are the backgrounds that we had before. The last one, so we've got three images that we're juggling with, is the headshots. And there are the headshots. Some of these are scary. Those are the headshots. And you could see the name of the headshot is the first name and the surname. And that is how this has been put together. Now, just to show you one thing, because I've got two sheets. And when I hook this up to Affinity, don't just accept the default because it, it will hook up to sheet one. Sheet one, I, I always build them this way. I call it variables. If when I finish this demo, I will move it and it will be archived with tonight's show. Therefore, it will no longer be in that location. If I want to use this again in the future, I'd have to recreate that file name, that file location, or I'd have to update everything in here. And because I may have to update everything in here, the root path of the demo is on sheet one. If you have no in interest whatsoever in understanding this, that is absolutely fine. Just ignore it. The reason I have done it this way is so I can move my data and it will still work. All I'd need to do is to go into here and change it. So if I were to cut that and change it just to XXX, you can see that that changes the background, the headshot and the club badge. And that is why I do it that way. I paste that back in, it corrects it. So that's the data we've got, that's it. Now the club badge obviously needs to be the club badge. So you need to pick the right one. That's coming from the club column here. So whatever they, whoever they play for in the club column, that's what's in the club badge. The headshot is very similar. It's the name and that is coming from column one and two. The background is different. The background, it's choosing it based on the club. But when you actually look at it, it's just a solid block of colour. That's the conditional element. That's where it's coming from. That's our data. So I'm saving that data and I'm closing it. So what I need to do at this end is then hook it up to that data. So there is the data, trumped XLSX and open. Like I said, it chooses the first sheet. Don't do that. Mine is in a sheet called players. So make sure that you choose the correct sheet, not only the correct file, but the correct sheet as well. You can then in there preview it with a record. Not that you'll see anything at the moment because we haven't hooked anything up at this end yet. That's what we need to do next. So in our fields panel, I'm going to pull that out because down here we now have data merge and it's showing us what we're hooked up to. So this one here was the player's name. And I'm going to center that and I'm going to double click the first name, put a space in and double click surname. That will put the first name and surname in there. Um, I know it doesn't look like it will, but that's because of the size of it. But if we preview it with a record, you can see it fits. This one was going to be the team. So let's start with a tilde and then put in the club and then finish with a tilde at the end. Then in this one, we're putting age. Now at the moment, where on earth are we here? That one, you were going to be left aligned and you were going to be centered. I know that looks weird, but we'll go with it and have a look. So that one is the age. I see it's far too big. That's the problem. So what was this? This was 12. Let's grab this and make that 12. That's better. And then go to the height and put the height in. You're doing your own thing, aren't you? 
We'll sort you out in a minute and goal scored. Right. That one's all right. Typical. Typical. Right. Grab these. They were 12. Right. Now it fits on there. Right. Those are the easy things to put in. They are the text based elements. Right. But we need to also put the headshot in here. So you make a selection of the picture frame and you double click the headshot. So the headshot is there at the end. Then select the club badge and do that. And you might think you're done, but you are not done because we need this background to change based on the club that they play for. And we do have background. So double click on that. Might not look like it did anything, but it did. Because if we turn off everything else. What on earth are you doing here? There we go. That background is showing as an image and that image is going to come from the data. So let's have a look at it now with a record. Absolutely perfect. So let me do that so we can preview it and click away from there. Perfect. Perfect. I think I had, uh, to be honest, Get rid of that. I think I had this much wider because the trumped would not be uh, in the right place. So I have no idea why that worked before, but it's not quite right now. So we'll just make that a bit wider. We will eyeball it. That will do. Right. And is everything there? Let's preview with a record again. Yeah, that's looking fine. So at that point, we can bring on our data merge and we can generate. And it will go away and it will make our file. Now, it does show this dialogue drives me mad. I've already told it I want the images to be embedded. I know there's quite a few of them, but I want them embedded. But it still asks me because it reaches a certain size and, and it ignores my instruction. So I have to say, no, I don't want to link them. I want them embedded. And now there we go. We have the full data merge. We have the background color for Seaford Town, a different one for Redmond Rovers, another one for Minton United. Where's Wombleton? That's your favorite, isn't it, Mike? Wombleton, where's Wombleton? I'm sure it was green. I've lost Wombleton. Oh no, this is not good. Oh, it was that. There's Wombleton. There we go. I based even had based in the city of Tomsk. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Madame Cholet. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. There you have it. So the trick with that was making <laughs> the cards the right size, which were A6. They're quite small. Um, these could go off to our printer, couldn't they? Because they do um, like business card yeah. size and postcard size. So you could have these sent off for print, laminated, you know, make sure that the, there's a, an image on the back as well. And you've got your own set of top trumps. Who doesn't want their own set of top trumps? Now you know what a top trump is. So how you would play that, Thomas here is six foot four. So what would happen is I would have my cards, Mike would have his cards, and we would take it in turns to say, which element we wanted to compare. Age. Right. So age here, if Mike was choosing age, uh, then my six foot four is not going to do any good, is it? If we compare it with, let's say you had Thomas Wilson, 29. 29 is reasonably old for a player, isn't it? Uh, so actually, I would say if you had Thomas Wilson, you'd choose age or goals. And then whoever you're comparing those with, uh, if you said age, yep, yeah, Eric James is only 19. So Mike would win. And what would happen is Mike would then get my card. And the winner's the one who has all the cards, isn't it? Mm. Oh, happy, happy days from my childhood. <laughs> so have we got uh, any questions on that? Yes, Jamie's got it. Transparent backgrounds for the corners because it's going to print. If it's going to print, um, you wouldn't need to worry about the corners if they were rounding the corners for you. Um, but... You might as well do it right. So that was why I did it like that. Absolutely. No, but Jamie does like your um, your Trump wig thing. Oh, I could show you how I did that, if you like. I drew it out on a piece of paper first and then I scanned it in and then I, I used the um, pen tool to, to do that. Had to look just right. Well, I couldn't call it Top Trumps, could I? You know, copyright and all that. So it's called Trumped. There you go. He won't mind. I'm sure he won't mind. <laughs> OK, uh, let's get rid of all of that then. So let, let's no, 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 no. We're not doing that. 
we're going to do that and get rid of it. Excellent, excellent. Right, so let's go into there. Oh, Jammy's going to get his popcorn out now, aren't you? Right, I need to, to move this. OK, so I'm making a little bit of room and I'm going to switch to the webcam. That's the plan anyway. So let's do this and hope that you can you can see it. Can you see that? I can see that. So excellent going with that. Looking good so far. Now I just need the choice. So there's the first toy. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Uh, this was something I thought I had and then it turns out I didn't have it. So this is, is no good at all if I didn't have it, is it? There we go. Right. Can you see this? Yeah. Jolly good. Right. There it is. Right. Only small, but oh, hang on. perfectly no. formed. Oh, I'm so Oh, there. 30 seconds behind. There you go. He's panicking. Right. This was something I thought I had, and clearly I didn't. Um, it's a USB C hub. I do. And he says, see, the plants are still doing well. The plants are doing remarkably well. I dusted them earlier today. <laughs> Uh, I had plenty of these, but I came to update my oh possessed MacBook Air, and it was so slow. So I thought I'll I'll plug it in. I'll I'll you know Ethernet it. I didn't have an Ethernet connector. So the plan is with this one, it would have an Ethernet connector. All of my others do not have Ethernet connectors. So I'm hoping that this one does. Um, let's get it open. Right, there we go. And there is said Ethernet connection. There. So it's the only one I've got with the Ethernet connection. Um, it was £15 for one that just had an Ethernet connection. But you know what Apple were like with ports in, in the late 2010s, i.e. there weren't many. So I decided I might as well get this one, which worked out at uh, £19, so only £4 more, um, because it had three USB 3s on it, a HDMI and a pass-through power on it. So I could have had one that was slightly smaller, but only had the RJ45 for the network, or I could have had that one. So I went for that one. So uh, hopefully now... She said, fingers crossed. Um, I will be getting better speeds on my laptop because otherwise it's a doorstop. Oh, it's useless. I hate that machine. I hate it, hate it. In fact, so, so much so, you know, I'm pretty sure Renee's had three MacBook Pros while I've had that one. I think it might be time for a MacBook Pro. But we'll see if it works. I'll report back next week if that works. Right. The next one. You, you, this is audience participation, this one. As I open it, you need to tell me what I'm going to use it for. You can you can try just telling me what it is if you like. I was like. going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bigger box, bigger bigger box. I, I cut my nails as well, so so. Oh, Neil luckily, wants to know if that's the 2019 air. It was the 2018 air, and it's useless. I swear, my 2012 is faster. It it just takes forever to update. Right, I, I think I'm in. I'm, I'm half in anyway. So that, that last, last Intel one, I think it was, wasn't it? No, there was another Intel was one that? after that, yeah. surely. Um, I'm sure there was. But I, I, I wish I'd never bought it. I bought it because my laptop was six years old and I thought you can't expect the battery to last any longer. Needless to say, the 2012 model's still going strong. 2018 one, more of an ornament. Right, I, I'm almost in here. I still need to get in there and then in here and there it is oh excitement right let's get the box out of the way right i'm going to open it you're going to tell me one what it is and two what i'm going to use it for there we go that's it what is it and what am i going to use it for Oh, I can't wait to see these. Oh, Renee wants an M3. Pandemonium straight there. Toast rack. It is indeed a toast rack. Now, given that Mike and I are both gluten free, what would I be doing with a toast rack? 
answers on a postcard or in the chat. Put the answers in the chat while I go and get something. Oh, pandemonium's red hot here. Stand for devices. Oh, fruiting toast. Oh, Pete, no. No, Pete. <laughs> far, far too logical for me. Oh, Jammy's getting good there. Oh, Carol, mail. Now, actually, I do have um, a mail rack. I have several of them. I'll show you them in a minute. But first, I need I need my trusty assistant here. What, me? No, no. Oh. I just need my toys. Oh. Well, I can't demonstrate it without my toys, well, can I? This is true. Because they're red hot, these, you know. Um, yeah, some thought it was a letter rack. No, I do have that. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you my letter racks. You'll love them. Yeah, I've got a letter rack down there. Yeah, I know. That's because I bought... Oh, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, There's eight, one next door. Nine. One downstairs. Ten. We've got ten letter racks. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even get that much post. No, I'll show you what they're used for. That's what I'll do. I'll show you what they're used for. Right. So what I'm going to do here is show you we have other toys. Oh, we have SanDisk Extreme Pros. So here was the, here was the problem. These things, I put them in like that and they are hooked up with cables. So I put them in like that and they are on the back of my iMac on a 12 South backpack. So the problem was I had four SSDs and they get very, very hot. You could not stand them on top of one another. They'd melt. So I thought I, I need them lined up somehow. And the 12 South backpack comes with little grey legs that you screw in, but there's only two of them. So I hooked this over one of the legs and that sorted two out, but it didn't sort the rest out. It still gave me problems. So I, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking what I need is a is a toast rack. So I went straight to Amazon and found that. So this is actually the second one that I've got. I've got, I tried one, brilliant. It's in situ and I've got photos to share. But I thought I'll get another one because they can literally just sit on the desk while I'm working with, with, the, with the things in them. So these, this one will be used with my laptop. Oh, my 2018 MacBook Air. But I love it. And it also fits, moving again. These ones, which, what's this? Uh, Mac HD Mohawk, one terabyte, February 2023. So it's uh, an SSD in an Orico dock and it fits these as well. So they, they fitted in there beautifully as well. So I can either use um, my sand disks, of which you can see I've got quite a few, or that it can hold these. So instead of having them on the desk falling all over the floor. Oh, how civilised. So yes, it technically, it's a toast rack. But don't let that confuse you. No. So um, I promised, didn't I, that I would show you. Uh, we'll be able to see that. I think we will. I think we will. Letter racks, much bigger and white. So first set of letter racks. We're moving round now to the other side of the desk. Letter racks. There you go. There's three letter racks there uh, with Kindle, um, seven inch tablet, space, 2012 MacBook Air and it's got some iPads there, uh, iPad 1, 2 and 3 with an Asus tablet, don't ask. So that's three of them, but coming back over this side of the desk and keep going over there, there, more letter racks. So you can just see the letter racks there, the white ones. So what's in that is a Kindle Paperwhite, uh, a 2015 iPad, 20... 14 iPad, a 2018 iPad, or oh, a phone. There's a phone charging there. 2021 iPad. Oh, an Amazon Fire tablet, don't ask. There's my letter rack. That there, that is, is the, the possessed MacBook Air. Then I've got the 2017 iPad, 2015 iPad, and a spare monitor. And that at the back, oh, that, that's my paperwork. That That's just a file with paperwork in. And there's another letter rack. Who doesn't need <laughs> as many letter racks as I've got? And underneath them, that's my charging station. There's another charging station down there. That's my dad's laptop. These are my charging devices. Uh, underneath that, that's a, a monitor shelf. But underneath it, uh, there's three like plastic things and they've got in them um, all my AirPods. Not proper AirPods, obviously. 
Right, let's have a look. Try and hold that steady while I pull these out. All of the colours in all of the sizes there. So those, those are my headphones, they all match the iPads. Uh, that is post-it notes. I'm still a post-it note girl. And I've got more, more um, post-it notes and AirPods there. And they all slot in neatly. This thing doesn't move. That, you know, you can wiggle that to your heart's content. It doesn't move. So, yes, letter racks and toast racks is where it's at. Ah, kitchen alia. Mike actually does cooking in the kitchen, don't you? I, I just wander around thinking, what could I use that for in the office? <laughs> love it. Love it, love it. Ah. Yes, there is a drawer underneath with notebooks. Well spotted, Renee. Um, oh, Ben says he's got a 2015 iPad too. Um, was that? That was Benny's boys, wasn't it? Yeah. 2015, we had the extension built and uh, they, they were clowns, weren't they? And I was saying, you know, we want, want the elevation at, at whatever degrees and they were just looking at me. So uh, this iPad arrived while they were building it and I put um, Omnigraffle on it and I drew what I wanted. And I went out and this thing looked like an architect's plan and, and he, he nearly dropped, didn't he? And that was what we got built. So, yes, I have nice memories of my 2015. That was the first one with the pencil. And the pencil, Graham will tell you this, the pencil arrived later, didn't it? Mm. And it was something like half past 10 at night on a Friday. And they were saying it was out for delivery all day. And if I rang them once, I must have rang them eight times. I was like an expectant father. Anyway, it did arrive. And uh, Graham's always been laughing at me ever since that, the, you know, that poor guy wasn't allowed to go home till he delivered it. Well, no, obviously not, because otherwise it would have been Monday. There you go. Right. If you've got any questions about that, let me know. Uh, I'm going to switch you back and show you. So let's uh, whip over there. Why aren't you moving? Right. First off, there was the USB hub. Um, that was just a USB-C thing, so it would work on anything. And uh, Mike and I were saying that we've got plenty of these that connect to HDMI. And we also had a load to VGA, didn't we? So yeah. we have this thing. I can't show you that because the door's closed, but it's on the back of the door and it's got like um, it's like little pockets on the back of the door and they are full of these. And as I went through them the other day before I ordered it, I thought, how come I've not got one of these? And then I ended up picking one up and thought, oh, I've got one. And I went and sat down. And I thought it's the wrong USB. So then I had to go back and get one. So that's the one that I went for. Um, as I say, it was 19 pounds. I think it was on offer. I only needed the network connection. But I decided, given the lack of ports, that you can never have too many ports. So uh, fingers crossed it all works amazingly well. Oh, and it's supposed to work on an iPad, although I don't know whether I want to try that. Scary, scary. So that was the USB-C hub. Obviously, you're all now going to want a toast rack, aren't you? Tell me you're going to want a toast rack. <laughs> I couldn't believe how perfect it was. I think this was about seven pounds, seven fifty, something like that. I couldn't believe it was so good, both for the tiny drives uh, and the standard ones in the Orico dock. So that's what the tow track looks like. This is what it looks like in situ. That's the back of my iMac. So the two, um, it sat on a 12 South backpack, which is a shelf that attaches to the leg of the iMac. You can either have it on the back like I've got it. Or you could have it underneath on the front, but that wouldn't let you fit the drives on. You could put two on there. It will take two, but you'd have to think about the height of the stuff you were putting on. So the two grey legs that you can see screwed in are holding it in place. Um, but other than that, the drives are just sat in there and none of the drives are touching each other. So hopefully they won't go crazy heat wise. Uh, that is what it looks like. I only have plugged in there the power, a network cable, which is the one. There's four black cables at the bottom and there is a blue cable in the middle. That's my network cable. If you're wondering about the other one running from left to right from the middle of the shelf under the curtain, that, that's not a cable. That, that's a piece of string. Why is there a piece of string on the back of my iMac, you, you ask? Mm. The piece of string is tied to the leg. And the other end of the piece of string is attached to the power cable because you know what happens when you unplug the power cable? Shoots off the back of the desk and that's the end of that. So um, that's so it doesn't. The cable off an iMac is so inflexible, it's unbelievable. You can't kind of hide it or wrap it around something. But 
I'm happy to report everything is working tickety-boo. That's, that was my toe strike. If you've never seen a 12 South backpack, and that is what it looks like. So you can have it very high up like that. And you can also have one below the circle where you put the cables. But the problem with that is you don't have much room above that to put stuff on it. And as you can see, you know, it's intended for like a drive, one drive, you know, not, not the 17 that I've got. Um, it will take more than that. That's why it gives you the legs so you can prop up a computer if you're using it. But that that wouldn't work for me. If you've got your computer where it's facing into the room, you, you can apparently just put toys on it. But who's got room for toys? I've only got my potted plants. Um, so it will take a bit of weight, but it will it wouldn't take huge stuff. That's what it looks like underneath at the front. And again, it wouldn't take much there. It would take a mini. But I wouldn't try it with a Mac Studio. When I took that out of the box, Kim was quite right. It weighed about 15 stone. It looked like it would it would be like a, a mini. No, no. So while it would take a mini, it certainly wouldn't take my um, Mac Studio. And the, the monitor that I have my Mac Studio on is a Samsung because I'm not in the business of spending. How much was it? Four and a half grand a monitor. For a 32 inch screen. Yeah, that's not happening. So I bought Samsung instead. Very happy with it, but you just couldn't put a leg on the back. So that is a 12 South backpack. You got any questions about that lot? I've got plenty of toys. Oh, indeed I do. Yes, I've been called out for having toys. Um, usually people at church, isn't it? Mm. Why have you got so many iPads? And, and then followed up with, nobody needs that many iPads. To which the answer is, this, this woman in question, was an, a nail artist thing. And I said, and how many colour of nail varnish have you got? And, and while she changed colour, I said, and while you're at it, how many pairs of shoes have you got? Because I went shoe shopping once, didn't I? Once. Yeah. Once it was, was enough. It was about 1993. And I bought 12 pairs. And I've been wearing them ever since. Yeah, don't do shoe shopping. There you go. I'm cheap on the shoe front. Okay, so we got any questions on that or not? No. Right, in that case, I'll move on. This is the bit you're not supposed to miss. Oh, Kim's got a backpack and uses it like I do. Excellent. Right, uh, so we will be back next week. YouTube permitting, obviously, but, but we won't scarper if we end up owing them. We will be back next week. But this is the biggie. Are you sitting down? This is, remember that very special announcement I promised at the beginning. Well, here it is. Let's go back in time. 16th of March, 2020. Any ideas? Mm. We had what we thought was a great idea. Marooned at MacBytes headquarters. The plan was for five shows. We ran for 500. And we've since had some reunions and specials since then. Well. Mm. 16th of March. Are you with me yet? 16th of March is tomorrow. And we are having a marooned at MacBytes headquarters four years in special. Who's going to join us? It'll be 7pm UK time, noon Pacific, because we're currently in do not copy and paste week, aren't we? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, for three weeks, we're out of sync with the rest. Of, well, actually, no, it's not us, is it? America's out of sync with the rest of the world. So instead of being eight hours between us and Seattle, it's seven. So it's noon PT. It is 3 p.m. Eastern and it is 8 p.m. Central European. Other time zones may vary. But remember that the UK, all you need to do is put in 7 p.m. UK time. What time's that where you are? Because we're still in GMT at the moment, military time or Zulu time, whatever you want to call it. We're in the normal time. Uh, we will be going live on MacBytes FM tomorrow. So who's going to join us? Oh, pandemonium says she'll be there. I should probably remind everybody how it works because I seem to remember Peter forgot to update forgot to refresh the page and nothing happened. We broadcast audio live and there's an embedded chat. That's how it works. The chat will be made live about what? 5, 2, 10, 2, something like that. And we will be broadcasting live from seven o'clock. So that is how it works. Right. Uh, also available on demand is everything that's on YouTube. 
Just let me turn around and spit slightly. Uh, we have an After Hours playlist. Every After Hours is on there. Any After Hours would be grand to go and put a comment on. Just saying any After Hours would do, but particularly this one. You can find that at macbytes.co.uk slash After Hours playlist. And of course, we love you guys. That's why we're back. Despite YouTube's best efforts, that's why we're back. Give us a like. You've heard how important it is to the future of the show to like the videos and also subscribe to the channel. That is also very important, but not quite as important as even leaving a comment, which is amazingly important. You've been using the Super Chat, so I'm going to catch up with that shortly. Thank you for everybody who has considered that. There's Super Thanks, which is what happens after. So once it's no longer live, that's an option. You can sign up to my list and get all the information about the short videos that I put up on elainegiles.com slash VIP. There's also the Map Bites mailing list where you will learn about, you know, we haven't sent a marooned reminder yet because because it was a surprise. Mm. I'll sort that tomorrow. But those are all things Map Bites, Map Bites After Hours, marooned and the podcast. So macbytes.co.uk slash macbytes dash mail. And there's Slack. Slack is where we carry on the conversation. Jonathan was in after 20 seconds the other night, wasn't he? Because I should probably admit, when I was posting that thing, I was trying to put some lines in it, you know, line breaks between the paragraphs. And I forgot that Slack needs you to hold a key down for that. So I pressed enter and it just went live. And before I knew it, Jonathan had replied. And I'm like, whoa, that was fast. If you are not already a member and you would like to join, go to mattbytes.co.uk slash join Slack. Have you updated that? No, I'm doing it now. Uh, don't do it just yet, then. Go to go to slash join Slack after Mike has fixed it, not before. If you are already a member, you just need to go to macbytes.co.uk slash Slack and you should be automatically referred on. There you go. And that is how you can contact us. So you enjoyed it. Let me know. Um, oh, Peter's going to check his diary. <laughs> Good to know you're so busy. I'm, I'm with Annie. He's kidding. Jonathan checked his diary and decided whatever he was up to wasn't as exciting as being here with us. Can't say fairer than that. And I should probably say good morning to Jonathan, shouldn't I? Because he'll be catching up with us in the morning. Right. Could I put a link to the hub in the chat? For some reason, the QR code not working. Oh, no. Right. Uh, yes, I can. I can. What I can do with that is whip back to where it was, which was there. Do I have a link or is it there? Oh, it doesn't look like I put the link in. Naughty, naughty me. I'll go and get it. That's what I'll do. So let me switch to that and I will go and get it. There we are. Right. That would therefore, you see, Pete, this is when I'm going. Why, is, why isn't that working? Why aren't you going away? This is when I'm going to Notion. Everything would be in Notion. So in my uh, unboxing section in Notion, I would have the link. Uh, there we go. USB-C hub. And paste it in there. I'm assuming. Why is that not working? Let me just see if that comes through. Oh, there it is. Excellent. When I paste that in, it comes in in blue and then you don't see it because I'm on black. But never mind. It's there. Excellent. Oh, Kim says she's so happy to be here. We're happy you're here with us too. Happy that you're all here with us. And what else we got going on? Oh, Carol's enjoyed her Friday. Excellent. You are very, very welcome. Oh, I still use Notion, Pete. I do. But Notion just at times. I mean, it's shocking on mobile. Oh, I, I wish it. When I open our MacBite stuff on mobile, we have three columns and you can't read the first one. So if I've got five shows, I have to know what number the first one is and then manually count them up to actually open the correct show. You know, they have improved it as they've gone along, but there's some things that just it's just easier to open something else and type. Trust me. If you went back and watched our Obsidian thing, I think you might be surprised. Obsidian is where it's at. Let's just say that it is. Oh, Jammy's Jammy's binned notion. There are some lovely, lovely features in Notion that they've added. They're very nuanced. Just things like you can colour a button and things like that make a massive difference. But there's still some stuff like the mobile app and, and working offline that it just doesn't do. 
which is how come Evernote is still clinging on. I mean, Evernote has tried to commit Harry Carry that many times and they're still there. I mean, they've doubled their price. They've halved the features and they're still there. I don't know how they do it. Well, I do know how they do it because it just works. If you want very basic note taking, you're not completely bothered with backlinks. People won't move. Inertia just sets in and that's it. But Notion's where it's at as far as we're concerned for collaborative working. Um, we did look at craft and you can collaborate on craft, but there's no databases. And all of our stuff is in databases. I wouldn't fancy managing this without databases. But if you want to see anything that we do in Notion, um, let me know. Right. I'm going to see if this works now. Um, am I in the wrong place here? Why is the, why is the back channel empty, Mike? Where's the list? You said you'd done a list of people who put Super Chats in, because I want to thank everybody. Oh, it's all in the chat. In the, yeah, I'm, I'll give you the names. There's, You're going to, because gonna... they're, not, they're not in the back channel. No, they are in the back channel. But not with Super Chat written next. Well, some of them are. There's Johnny put a Super Sticker Just a in. minute. Am, am I in the same place? Am I in 211? Yeah. In the back channel. My back channel's empty. Ah, Notion isn't working right now. It's not there. We'll do a refresh. I'm crying out loud. I've only just gone to the page. Let me put your stuff in there all night. Ah, hello. Right. right. Okay. Oh, good grief. All the chat's in there. I'll never find it. If it's, you have it's given in me bold. A... Right. Okay. That might work. Um... Okay, so Johnny I, thank you very much. Graham, thank you very much. Tracy, thank you very much. Carol, thank you very much. Neil. Is Neil where's Neil? Neil's under Johnny. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> that's not what it says on here. Oh, I think Notion's having a moment. That that's another problem with Notion. I swear about four times, um, it would be last January, every time we went live, Notion went down. And my notes were in Notion. And I don't need my notes all the time, but I certainly do if I'm doing a recap or something. So uh, I started putting them in Obsidian on any random day and then collating them on a Friday, just so I know that they're there. I do wish Notion would work offline in situations like that, but it doesn't. Right, is that it or have I missed anybody? I think that was it. Excellent. Right, thank you very much. Oh, Kim says she's looking up Zite as well. <laughs> We've talked about Zite. Zite used to be cloud app. And the only reason that I use it, because it's not cheap, is I got a lifetime deal years ago when it was cloud app. And not only did I get a lifetime deal, I got a lifetime deal for two people, I think. So Mike piggybacks on it. Um, another option for, like Zite is Dropler. Ken, who has been with us on occasions, was using... Dropbox for the same thing. But the problem is what makes Zite and Dropler unique is that you can get a link directly to the image that you're putting up there. And that means um, it makes it a lot easier to embed it in Obsidian. That is why my Obsidian database is the data in my Obsidian database is something like three or four meg. And that's it. Because all the rest is on Zite. So Zite's amazing, but um, I think I would only go for it if I got a lifetime deal. Uh, what else have I got going on here? Oh, yes, the honeycomb cake for, and, and, and the um, Yule log. We'll, we'll sort out a picky of that next week. And you want to know how to create the trump wig? Yeah, that was working from a hand-drawn image. So I'll show you how I did that. I haven't even got a scanner set up. <coughs> so all I did with that was take a photo of it. The trick with that was the variable weight of the pen. So, yes, I use the pen tool for it. I don't use the pen tool in the way most people do. I can't be doing with the pen tool most of the time. It does its own thing. So I tend to work with straight lines and then bend them at will when I have finished. So, yes, I'm quite happy to do that. If you want that, let, let me know. And if there's anything else, let me know as well. Right. What else are going in here? Uh, I can't scroll this. It, it's weird. Okay. Um, no back and forward arrow for the second pane. Where are we now? 
Is this um, forklift? There's no back and forward. There is. It's in the top left, if that's what we're talking about. Oh, Evernote's killing the classic Android app this month. Do you know, I, I wonder what they're up to. I really do wonder what they're up to. Uh, thank you, Tracy. Tracy says it's great to have the Matt Bites family back together. And what else have we got here? You want the Trump wig? Oh, we, we could make Trump wigs, couldn't we? Or stickers of Trump wigs. <laughs> I never did the coder thing. Um, I've looked at lots of online services, but I never did the coder thing. Uh, oh, it feels unintuitive to use one above the left pane. I totally agree. I must admit, I, I keep forgetting that that's where you need to go when you're in the right hand pane. I wish they'd sort something out for that, but I don't know whether they will or not. I really don't. You want a second back and forward button. It makes sense if there was a shortcut key, wouldn't there? Can you? I think with forklift, you can, um, if memory serves set any shortcut key anywhere yeah there's a whole separate thing for the shortcuts so let's have a look let's put back in and see if there's two of them um oh there is a shortcut key and it's a standard one it's command and square bracket so let me navigate my way up here and then see if that works it does so if we go over there Oh, good grief. I'm on a tiny screen here. Let me see if it works. You'd need to be able... Oh, it does work. Oh, I'm liking this. Right. So what you'd need to be able to do is focus a window. So is there a shortcut to go between the left and right panels? Hide the sidebar, devices, swap panes. No, I just want to, to make one pane. Tile to the left, move to the right. I don't see one. Oh, surely there is. Come on, Jamie, surely there is. I know you're not seeing it. Um, let me have a look. Uh, here it is. So that's a forklift. And what I'm doing with this is like going backwards. So if I do this and I go all the way up there, I can then use a shortcut key, which is command and square You're bracket. You're not sharing your screen, by I the am. Way. I am. I'm sharing it now, Mike. Oh. That will take you backwards. It will also, over here, as long as that's active, take you backwards and forwards there as well. So what I need is a way to switch from right to left. There must be one. Let's have a look. Tile window to left, move. No, I just want to go there. So I would go into here and in the shortcuts, I don't, oh, let's try left and see what comes up. Absolutely nothing. That's useless. There's uh, swap panes, but I think that does actually swap panes, which wouldn't be helpful at all. It would take this and put it over there. I need this one to be the active pane. Is there a shortcut? Well, there you go, Jamie. It does work, but what I'd want is to be able to swap panes, and there must be a way. I'd have thought view or go. So back and forwards is there. Open and closing folders, special folders, sync the browser. Don't see it. Hide the sidebar, title, path, devices. Oh, come on. Don't think swap the pane's going to do it. No, nope, I'm not seeing it, surely. Because you can create a new pane. All I want to do is swap between them. Hmm. Copy to, this is all to do with moving. I'd have thought maybe window. Not seeing it. But if there is one, maybe we should ping them. There must be. There must be a way. Come on. I wish I knew what it was. I, mean, I know you can click it, but the whole point is I'm like you, I don't want to use the mouse. And I, I, when I'm over here, this makes no sense at all. But the, if the standard shortcut keys, that, that will solve the problem. Now, if I could just switch between the panes. Oh, there must be a way. That, that's my challenge for the week, that, Jamie. Drag and, drag and drop the pane. I don't want to move the pane. I just want the left one to be active. Logic would say, we do that? No, that? No. 
I, I would have thought something with the arrow keys. But nothing's moving it. So let's try that. All that. All that. No, nothing is moving it. It needs a kind of focus left, focus right. And I am not seeing a focus left or focused right. Mm -hmm. Let's swap panes and see what that does. I'm not sure if that swapped all of them or just those two, but that would kind of do it, but it's a bit clunky. They're too clunky, I don't like that. Question, when was the last 27 inch iMac released? Uh, wasn't that the one we got? The 2020? Yeah. 2020, which is the, the one that we've got. Um, they did have some in refurb the last time I looked, but obviously you're pretty limited. Um, I keep thinking they'll bring them back or they'll make a 32 inch, but to be honest, don't they have moved past it now. I wanted an iMac rather than anything else because when we knew there was going to be a problem, when we were thinking they're not going to bring any more iMacs in and, and you know, going to be left with this, it was like, let's test a monitor. So we bought the monitor that is in the middle of my desk right now and we tried it on the laptop. We tried it on your Surface, didn't we? Mm. We, couldn't, we couldn't make it the right resolution for recording 4K screencasts, no matter what we did with it. So this Samsung monitor sat, let's say this Samsung monitor, that Samsung monitor there, that one right in the middle, there we go. That one sat there for 14 months on the desk, not doing a thing. <laughs> and then I needed to order the Mac Studio. So the Mac Studio arrived. That was a Thursday, wasn't it? Because it was early. And Mike was saying, get it out of the box, get it on the desk and get it tried on that monitor. Because if it's not working, you need to order an Apple monitor. And we would have wanted to order it on the Thursday for delivery on the Friday. So I got the studio out of the box. I plugged it into the monitor on, on the desk, this Samsung one. It just worked. And we looked at each other like, for 14 months, that's not worked. It's working today. And that's how come, um, to go back to the webcam, that was the monitor that I had, that one there. And that was how I ended up with one twin there and another twin over there. Um, it was comical, that, because I didn't think I had the room. Um, I was saying I'll put the 32 inch in the middle and then I'll get two 27s for the side. And I couldn't find a 27 inch um, at the right price or the right res or but there was just nothing right with them. And then I looked at it in the middle. And at this point, I've got these two 27s either side, but the resolution wouldn't push to the, to the right level. So as I moved dialogues from window to window, they resized. It drove me crackers. And then I thought, why, why don't you just get two more the same? And I thought, because they won't fit on the desk. So I ended up having to move quite a bit of stuff. So that the monitors and, and the plants are all that is on the desk now. That's it. Right. OK. Uh, yeah, look what Jamie started. That That's trouble of the week now. Right. Oh, Neil says he thinks the environmental chart has seen the back of the IMAX. They need to bring back the ability to revert to monitor only use. We could do that by incorporating a chip in it. I don't know what they're thinking, to be honest. Maybe it's not worth their while because they just want you to use iPads. People seem to think of iPads, you know, that you might have a computer for 10, 12 years, but people tend to, to purchase an iPad faster. Um, I mean, I've got iPads that are 12 years old and they're fine. They work fine. But most people want an iPad that's quite snappy. Um, and they're not going to pay three and a half grand for an iMac when you can get a really good iPad for a grand. So I always thought it could be that. Tracy says, do I have a recommendation of Farm Browser Pro a while back? Recently bought it for specific, specific use and it's been a lifesaver. Uh, yeah, I did use that and um, it's still on my iPads. There is a version for the Mac. It's nowhere near as fully featured. Um, there was a pro version and some other version. I ended up with a pro version and the difference was what it would connect to. And it was really handy for me to be able to connect it to like OneDrive and S3. So, yes, it's a very, very good app that. 
Uh, or a Vision Pro. Oh, that is so not happening. I, you know, I've seen people who have had the trial and they've said that you're not even allowed to take the trial, the, the demo thing in, in store. You're not even allowed to take it if they can't match your prescription to, to what they've got in there. And I'm like, why? You know, I mean, near enough's near enough. Um, I read a, a, an article from a guy who went in and did the test. And he said that a lot of people had reported that one of these, there's two things in this demo. One is that you're on a tightrope. And I can't remember what the other one was, but it was something that was very visually intensive. It could trick you into thinking that you really were on a tightrope and that some people had reported that they felt sick with it. Well, you know me and Blackpool Pleasure Beach, don't you, Mike? Mm. Do you remember the the go the ghost train? My mum would never go on a ride on, on a pleasure. The Pleasure Beach is like um, a theme park and she would never go on a ride. And she decided she would go on the ghost train with me. And we came to this tunnel. It was a tunnel of light. So the tunnel was like lit up and it had a brick pattern on it and it was turning around. I was freaking out. I couldn't handle it at all. And she said, just close your eyes. You're not moving. Just close your eyes. So I closed my eyes and I got through it. We get to the other end of this tunnel and there was like a tableau. And, you know, they have all like spiders, webs and stuff. Well, this tableau was three skeletons riding bikes. Mum started laughing and she couldn't stop. Literally three days later, she's still laughing at these skeletons riding bikes. <laughs> but it always made me feel it, it put me off kind of visualizations like that. Many years ago, there was an advert came on the BBC and I can't remember what it was made up of. It could have been like it looked like scales coming together and to make a face. Does anybody remember it? It was like an ident on BBC Two. And there were these things flying through the air and they all settled together and it made a face and I couldn't watch it. It was just, there was just, I do remember. just something because you said there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. What's wrong with you? And I thought typical, just me then. And I Googled it and no, it wasn't just me. So it's like s some people have this issue with visualizations like that, that it makes them feel nauseous. So I can't see me settling for that anytime soon, no matter how much Timmy wants me to. I'm going to stick to, to, to my Mac Studio. And should they eventually stop making computers, then I'll just switch back to Windows. But no one wants to think about that, do we? Uh, no more big iMacs, why not? Your guess is as good as ours, Pete, but then it's not happening. There have been rumours that there'll be a 27 or a 32, but it would be at least two years away. And I can't see why you would do that. They seem to be making a massive distinction between what they consider to be pro models and what they consider to be consumer models. So the pro models like the Mac Pro and the Mac Studio look like normal computers. The iMac 24 inches look like candy floss in all the colours, in all the sizes. I mean, they do do a silver one, thankfully. They didn't do space grey, did they? Because when they were talking about that, I thought, oh, I could quite go for a space grey one. But, you know, there, there's pink, there's green, there's powder blue. Like, really? I don't get it myself. But it, it seems to be that they're giving people what I'm not even sure people want, which is like, I mean, I know your mother, we bought her a, a pink iPhone, didn't we? But she said she said she wanted a pink phone. I mean, no, no accounting for taste. I don't think you need that with computers. And it, and it gives you a stock problem of which ones do you make? And then they started making distinctions between was it the network speed was faster on the orange one? I mean, what if I don't want an orange one? I want a faster network, but I don't want an orange one. And then the network cable was on the plug or something. Oh, life's too short for all of this. Can you imagine having to go under the table to, to get the network cable out? I mean, it's just not happening. Patience has just come back. Mm -hmm. She will have missed the big announcement. Oh, <gasps> She will. Do you want to tell her? Tomorrow at, what time will it be? Seven o'clock hour time. Three o'clock patience is time. We have a marooned to celebrate. Is that the right word? Yes. <laughs> For four years of being marooned at MacBytes headquarters. <gasps> We're celebrating. We are celebrating. Since when do Apple give people what they want? Mm. They don't give me what I want, Tracy, that's for sure. I just think they're giving people like 
well, the, the choices they're giving them to me are not choices that need to be made. I mean, do people go in a shop and ask for a specific colour of TV? I mean, I wouldn't know because I haven't bought one in years, but really? Do you go in and say, I must have it. I want a TV, but it must be yellow. Can't you just redecorate the room? It's easier. I don't understand why colour is their overriding concern. I, I don't get that. I don't get why Apple care about that. Steve Jobs had the right attitude. It's black and that's it. That was the first phone, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And the first iPad. The second iPad, was the second one different colour? Was that the third one? No, it was white or black. The second one we got from Liverpool. Yeah, and I remember I was in two minds. I was going to get a, a, a white one. I ended right, up with a black one with a red cover. Right up to getting in the shop. I ended up spending 70 quid on that cover, I, I, honestly. What was I thinking? But, you I know, think I, it was 72, wasn't it? I don't know. Or was but, it 79? Oh, don't tell me I spent more than that. I just don't think the things that bother them bother me. That's the problem. Have I put the map by its uh, quarters on the calendar? Well, Tracy, how would I have done that when I'm here talking to you? Seriously, if I'd have put it on first, I'd have got told off. Plus well, the fact it, it, would, it would have spoiled the surprise. It would have spoiled the surprise. Yeah. Right. Would you like it on the calendar? Right. Uh, it's now on the calendar. Give it a chance to update and it's on the calendar. I had it all ready to go on the calendar. And, and what's more, because I know you, you pulled me up on this, I have spent... Hang on a minute. Just a minute. What's going on there? I have actually spelt the URL correctly. Yeah. Because last time I missed the S off. Didn't this time. And it's on the calendar. Uh, the original IMAX saved the company. The reason was for the colours. I could understand that, Paul, back then because it, it was more of a gimmick. And people, it, it was iconic. It was totally different than any computer people had seen. And they were prepared to buy it. Now, I, I don't get why it's needed. I really don't see it. But that's just me. I, I would go for power all the time. I mean, they announced those M3 Max on Monday, was it, or Tuesday, last week, whatever. And it was like they brought out M3 laptops. I thought, I'm interested. Let me have a look. They're a MacBook Air. Forget it. My experience with the MacBook Air has been so bad. The first MacBook Air I had was fabulous. The second one, absolutely useless. I wouldn't touch one. Wouldn't touch it. What, what I'm interested in is not... They're like the most powerful machine we've ever made. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, whatever. I don't believe them. It might be great for surfing the web and posting to Insta. But and I'm not even trying to do anything amazingly difficult with this laptop. You know, even waiting for it to open Obsidian. Obsidian's probably the, the only thing it can manage. But when I come to update an app or Obsidian tries to sync, it, it takes far, far, far too long. So... Maybe it could just be me. Who's going to make the top trumps game for the Matt Bites crew as characters? <laughs> right, Tracy, it's on the calendar. Have you looked? Patience looks for more function than fashion. It's like shoes give me comfort. That's exactly me, Patience. That's it. That's it. I want unbridled power. Give me an option for that. And the problem with that these days with Apple is... I lusted for years after a Mac Pro and I used to go into the Apple store every week for a thing they used to have called one to one. And I loved it. And there was the um, Mac Pros and, and they'd let me take it apart and play with it. You know, I was the only one that was allowed to talk to the top technician, wasn't I? They didn't mm. dare let him loose on any other customers. He didn't really. See, he spoke like Klingle. He couldn't interface with customers and I had this query and no one else could deal with it and they said well we we could let her talk to Squib and people were like what he can't talk to customers oh I think he could talk to her well let, well let's see this is Squib Squib Elaine that was us done 40 minutes later we'd built this thing um so you know I loved going in and and they didn't mind me dismantling stuff and playing with it and that was the one I wanted but I wanted to wait because it was due an update and it was one of Apple's, it'll be four years in the update. And when they updated it, I remember my mum saying to me, if you've got, you know, your credit card ready. And I said, I've got it ready. It's the, it's, it's the Mac Pro this, this time. It's the Mac Pro this time. Wasn't it 20, 2013, 2014? And they updated it. 
bin 1.0. And I, I nearly cried. I thought the whole point of the Mac Pro was being able to put any drive in it, you know, all the drive, but I didn't want a bin that was circular that I couldn't put anything in. Really? And then they brought out after that, I went down and mum said, did they update it? I said, yeah. She said, when's it coming? I said, it's not. And I showed, I said, she said, why not? I said, this is it. And I showed her a picture of the thing on an iPad and she went, that's an airport bin. I said, I know. I know that. You know that. Johnny apparently doesn't know that. <laughs> not an iPad. No, not a bin. Not an airport bin to Johnny. But it, I can assure you it was to me. So I, I didn't, I never got it. But now the problem is, you know, you could buy a Mac Pro, but I think it's something like the same spec of Mac Pro to Mac Studio was five and a half thousand pounds difference. So it just wasn't worth it. But the problem then is you can't change anything. So at the point you buy it, you have to kill yourself to put the RAM in it. You have to kill yourself to put the hard drive space in it. Um, one thing I haven't talked about while we've not been on air is those drives that you saw. Oh, let's get that on there and then you can see them. Right. These these little drives. I have one terabyte drives. I have two terabyte drives and I have four terabyte drives. And I had two two terabytes these models exactly on this machine for five months. And then one day it stopped working. And I thought, why has it stopped working? First thing I tried was to take it and put it on another machine, which I did, and it was fine. It just doesn't work on this one anymore. So I thought, never mind, I'll install the two four terabytes. That'll be fine. No, that lasted a day. And then that wasn't fine. So I does the Googles. It's a known issue with um, ARM chips. So there's nothing wrong with these drives at all. They just will not work on this machine, which is why I have a toast rack and four of them on my Intel iMac. I mean, that is just ridiculous. But I, I've literally left it. That's why there's nothing plugged in the front of that machine. There's nothing plugged in it. There's no drives on it because it just doesn't work. And the other thing they did the other day was they did... Um, an update to Sonoma and all the USB stuff stopped working. So you're quite right with Apple. I am not. I have no idea what they are up to. I'm not impressed with Apple of late. I'm not. Oh, good. Tracy's got it on, on the calendar. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Patient says she can find a pretty cover to put on if you want colour. That's exactly my point. You know, we all go crazy. I remember there was a phone. Was it the six? Six or the seven, something like that. Um, and it was piano black. What was the first thing I did? Put it in a case. And yet I bought the piano black one. <laughs> this is what they do to us. Oh, good grief. Shortfall with Mac Studio. I believe it's all uh, ARM computers. So yeah, it worked fine for five months. And I had two on there. One was a twin of the other and all the data went on it. Now, I went for a two terabyte drive. so. I, I can put data on there if I want to because I went for two terabytes. But the problem is, how do I back it up if I can't plug a drive in? So what I've taken to doing, it's like, I mean, life's too short to fight it. So what I did was I thought, OK, it's not working. So what's the alternative that doesn't involve plugging a drive in? And that was why I thought, well, I need a fast network connection because at the end of every day, the stuff I've been working on either needs to be in Dropbox so it's automatically backed up to the cloud and or on a drive hanging off my Intel iMac, which was why the Intel iMac needed rebuilding. Long, hideous story, but that's why I did it. And then, of course, I had a problem that I couldn't hang the drives off the back. Too many drives and, and they needed more shelves. But then the toast rack solved that problem. So, yes, kitchen alia, kitchen alia with letter racks, toast racks and the wooden spoon that I stole from you. Your, your soup making wooden spoon so I could put the ram oh, in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fun here. It's fun here. Right. Um, Peter says there's some affordable refurb studios, but the ram is low. That's the problem, I think. I think a lot of people um, got the lowest ram, realised they needed more ram and probably sent them back. It's unfortunate, isn't it? Uh, Jamie's not happy with them either. It seems every time we update my phone, the battery seems to die more. 
do you know, I still haven't updated my watch. My watch is, is, is on is it iOS 9. I, I have no idea. It's not on the latest one at all. Not on the latest one at all. Won't do it. I'm just going to wait and buy a new watch. It's easier. Your AirPods Pro aren't charging anymore. Just over a year old. Jammy, buy the ones I got. They're 16 quid and they're fabulous. I recommended it, didn't I, to a friend of yours? Yeah. The counsellor. Talking of which, I just remembered I've got these. But they're still wrapped up. You could maybe open them and use them. Because, you know, if you're out with the dog and you lose one, it's going to cost a fortune, but mm. that's 16 quid, you can just yeah. replace it. And they're fabulous. They connect instantly. I've had so much better use out of the ones that I bought rather than the Apple ones. I'd never buy an Apple one again. Wouldn't. Uh, you're nervous about installing updates. Just don't do it. Don't do it for as long as humanly possible and then some. <laughs> um, oh, Tracy went for, for the titanium colour for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've got a cover on it in under 24 hours. Do you know, I was looking for a case for my iPad. Uh, this is a 2018 11 inch. What happened to all the cases? Obviously, I've had this iPad six years this year and the case is looking a little bit worse for wear. This was the iPad, the first one, I think, that had the magnetic back. So the case kind of twanged to it and then it just flopped over with a cover on the front. It's absolutely useless when it comes to the pencil. Don't bother. But now you can't buy that one. No matter what you're prepared to pay, you cannot buy a case for it, a replacement one, that doesn't include a slot for the pencil. What if you've not got a pencil? I mean, as it happens, I've got a pencil, but I don't want a case that adds that much bulk to it. And I can't replace the case that's on it, which was fabulous. It's just a little bit worn. So, you know, I've got like bits coming off this case at the edge and I'm still using it because I can't get another one. It's typical. Absolutely typical. Uh, Jammy uses them for the gym. Oh, they are very good. They are very, very good. Um, I mean, that guy you recommended them to even said, didn't he? When he when he bought them and used them, he said, these are fabulous. Yeah. You know, mm. and they're so cost effective. That Well, you saw how many I've got in the drawer. They're all colour coded. <laughs> I know you could switch devices, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to to know when I pick up the headphones which device they're attached to, so they're all colour-coded. I've got a green one as well. Too expensive not to put in a case. Totally agree. Totally agree. You know, I've looked at how nice it would be to have it out of a case, but, you know, I always remember back to the iPod. Do you remember the iPod Classic? I had, like, a shiny silver back for two seconds. And then it said you can polish it. No, 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 no. D don't do that. Oh, it was scratched like anything. I mean, you can design something. D design is not just what it looks like. It's how it works when you're using it. I mean, these AirPods that I'm talking about. Let's get them out and get them on the screen. There they are. They look identical to the Apple ones. They charge with USB-C, which only the newer ones do. But you've got this display on the front. And as soon as you open that, it's telling you what battery the case has got. Let's see if you can see that. I think you can just about see that. Um, and it connects literally. If I just pull that out, I can hear it saying connected. That's it, literally. I've never had it not connect which is why I got all the colours in all the sizes. They are fabulous. Uh, they don't have the thing on, um, you know, where you can like thread a strap through. But to be honest, I'd just buy another pair. I'd, I'd just be done with it. They are absolutely fabulous. And I've also got the colour you've not seen. That's the one that's attached to my iPad. I even got the, um, isn't this Jonathan's phone colour? Got the green one. I even got the green one. Uh, but inside they are green, but the, but they're white as well on the inside. So I got the green one for, for my iPad. And I just love the fact that on the front it tells you what charge you've got and the fact that it's actually charging it, which is just genius. The Apple ones don't have. So no, my, my AirPods are in the drawer and that's that. I'm done with them. Done with them. Have I got a link for the headphones? Yep, I certainly have. Let me go to Amazon and show you. Uh, that's the wrong Amazon. Right. Uh, uh, uh. Bring that on there. 
and orders. Right, let's try headphones. See how many times I've bought them. Right, my first ones were the white ones. So there they are. Oh, there's a 15% off voucher at the moment. There we go. That is what they look like. So let's get a text link and post that in. There we go. Um, so you see they're all in different colours. Um, that's actually interesting because the pink ones were the only ones I didn't get. <laughs> oh, no, we didn't get the blue ones either. There you go. Because they were forty nine ninety nine, which is like, really? When all the others are nineteen ninety nine including the rose gold, which I didn't bother with. But what you need to look at is they're on sale. So the 19.99, but down here, there's a voucher. So if you apply the 15% voucher, you get three pound off that. So they'd be 16.99 and they are fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I've now got uh, the white ones, the black ones, the blue ones, the green ones, the gray ones and the, and the red ones <laughs> all attached to different devices. And I'm very, very, very happy with them. Oh, look, I could still get them delivered here today, but I should probably not buy another pair, shouldn't I? <laughs> I'm lethal with them. What can I say? But yeah, I love those. Absolutely love them. Right. OK, then uh, let's have a look what's going on here. Um, well, Timmy might might pull the plug. Do you know, I don't think that should be allowed. I don't think he should be allowed to remove features. But there you go. So I'm not updating that at all. Um. Oh, Tracy's been handing them around as gifts as well. And Dr. B loves them. They are amazing. They really are. Trust me, they are very, very good. Right. OK, then. So end of the first show. Don't forget when it's finished. Comments, comments. Don't be freaked out if the comments don't go live straight away. I'll get round to them in the morning. Um, that's because some people put snotograms, don't they, Mike? And we giggle over snotograms, mm. don't we? <clears throat> Do you know the best snotogram I ever got? You know how we start the show? How are we all doing? Well, this guy had left his speakers on and he said that it just started playing and that I was screeching. <laughs> and I thought, you're the idiot that went to sleep with your speakers on. <laughs> That's the kind of comment you get. So don't forget to put nice comments on it. And we will be back with you next week. But... Also, don't forget, in the meantime, that we will be here tomorrow at seven o'clock UK time with Marooned four year anniversary. Don't miss it. I was thinking the other day, you know, about did Jammy join us for Marooned? And I'm sure he's been to some specials. But that led me to thinking, does Jammy know about the lady pipes? Probably not. <gasps> oh, Jammy, do you know about the lady pipes? You need to let me know. <laughs> So we are going to say it's a good night from me. And good night from me. And what, what do we also used to say? Stay safe, guys, and we'll see you next time.